He has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer and The Trade Union Congress is a member of a steering committee on child labor and desensitization program it has organized in partnership with LO Norway is keen to eradicate child labor and other forms of modern slavery in the country. The organization which replicated sensitization programs in other coastal areas in the country is confident of efforts to affirm the agenda. But we are trade unions and it's important that we talk about the workplace. Who is from the mining union here? The miners are not here. In the mines, during colonization, the white colonialists were asking the chiefs to give free labor. And so they will go and capture people from everywhere, especially from the northern territories, and they will bring them to Takwa. And they will give it to the, the, the white commercial people for free. And if you are a chief and you don't supply that labor, they, they punish you. So there's a link between slavery, colonialism, and forced labor. And the history, if you read about it, these are sad things. So people who think about this... this uh, Speaking at the event, president of the Ghana Union Traders Association, Dr. Joseph Obin bemoaned the country's economic crisis, which has gone from bad to worse, and saved notice of shutting down shops operated by eight members with effect from August 29, 2022, if the seedling worrying situation is unaddressed. Of the trading community, yes. by the details of the trading community, yes. by the details of the trading community, yes. we declare, yes. we declare closure of shops. A dollar is currently trading at 10 Ghana cities. Inflation is almost at 32%, and the policy rate is currently at 22%. In line with this, Guta is further calling on the government to act swiftly to address their concerns to salvage the ailing economy. On these issues of depreciation, inflation, and interest rates, we have talked, complained, and made press statements, but the problems have worsened. Better use the young as an alternative to ease the pressure on the United States dollar, as has been done by other nations in the world, such as Zimbabwe. The Bank of Ghana should monitor and enforce its regulations to strictly control trading with the dollar on the local market, as well as the activities of the black market. We also appeal to the Bank of Ghana to encourage businesses to transact with the mainstream banks by relaxing the stringent requirements on documentation. This will curtail the dealings and activities of the black market. There should be a clear distinction between the foreign bureaus and what we term as black market. Since the foreign bureaus are legitimate, we should do everything to streamline their activities to the benefit of the nation. Also, the Bank of Ghana should effectively monitor the activities of the West African banks operating in the country as they can be used as conduits by neighboring countries to siphon forests from Ghana. Our borders should also be strictly monitored as people actually transfer, uh, transfer, transport forests from our country to their countries when there is shortage of sea.
so many things that they are doing that we do not know. But we were to embark on our demonstration. And trust you me, we are going to make a definite statement on Monday. And our members have told us that they didn't even want one day and that we should do it for two days. Thereafter, the regents were calling for um, one week and that we were going to follow it up the full week with an, uh, a closure. So that because um, our uh, problem is such that we, um, we, we need a solution and that we need something that will um, um, uh, 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 give a pinch to the leadership. And that's what we wanted to do this. We didn't do, we were not going to do this out of malice. So when Council of State, out of its own wisdom, called us, we had earlier um, been called by the National Security, the, um, the Trade Ministry, and then also the uh, Finance uh, Ministry. And then we have had joint meetings and all that, and very interesting discussion where um, 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 the, uh, uh, put on, and especially here too, we have been able to engage with the a good way, um, council coming from um, our um, council of state, and that um, we have now toned down on our demands, and then um, like the advice that they have given, Nana has given us with, the, with uh, his council, we are going to um, stop our uh, the close down on Monday, and then. The committee that have been set by the eminent body um, will take effect for Monday. And that, from that time, we are going to work till a month where we are expecting that within that time, those issues, because we have 10 items that we presented, and those items, there are some that can be done immediately, and there are some that uh, we, uh, uh, it will take a little bit time, and that's why we're given the month. And we trust in the... Um, leadership of the Council of State and then the Council that they are giving us and especially when they are dedicated to the course because most of them have traveled and they are in recession and they have to convey because of us how can't we listen we have to listen to them they are our leaders we respect them we couldn't have he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom he is the redeemer and He has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer. And a very good morning to you for joining us. So it's a pleasure knowing you're doing the viewing live on Pan African Television, of course. We're live from the studios of Pan African Television at Tabelink Bay. Uh, a pleasure always coming your way. It's the Mother of World Talk Shows, Alaji and Alaji. My name is Senna. Number. We are live on radio, on Radio Gold. Let me also say a big thank you to Ahunto 92.3 FM. Also, should shine FM in Akachi on 96.9. Hills FM in Adakulo on 91.7. New Jersey Radio in Ketakrachi on 89.7. Sela Radio in Dabala on 97.1. Diamond FM in Tamale on 93.7. Bawa Radio in Yendi on 106.5. Radio Kitao in Saboba on 95.7. Benya FM in Elmina on 105.7, Cape FM in Cape Coast on 93.3, Global FM 105.1 in Ho, Volta 1 TV, Zeps FM 95.9 in Zebila, True FM 92.5 in Adesu, and La Maria FM 89.1 in Triponi. Thank you all for joining us. If you are listening to us on any of the stations, we are grateful to you for choosing us. Here we say that it is no matter who is involved. And then we'll leave you by tired, catered. Now, this weekend, in fact, today, we are talking about who to blame for our road to die. Man. Because President Akufuado says it can't be him or the government. He's making an interesting proposition. And the story that has been trending because it was published in the National Daily, that's uh, one of the National Dailies, that's the Daily Graphic. And they published this story on Thursday, August 25th, 2022. And this is what they say. They headline a decision on IMF can be blamed on government. President Ekufuado. In the story by Mohamed Fugu from Damongo, he said the decision to seek an international monetary fund supported program cannot be blamed on the government. 
President Anandu Dan Kwai Kufuadu has said. He said, while a section of the public blamed the government for mismanaging the economy, the situation was way beyond the making of the government as it was occasioned by current global crisis, which had not spared other economies around the world. Quote, in fact, the big difference that we are having in Ghana today and why we have gone back to the IMF is that everybody recognizes it is not as a result of my mismanagement, as was the case during the tenure of the previous government. The reality is that there are global inflation, high commodity prices, among others, and all these have been the principal reasons for the difficulties we are having as a country, end quote. He said, President Kufuadu said this in an interview with Damogo based Pad FM in the Savannah region. So it's clear on where the blame should lie squarely, global economic situation. We'll be discussing that in our very first topic. We'll stay on the economy. Because this week, Guta had initially announced that they were going to close shop on Monday. They have reversed that decision. They said they have had a conversation with the Council of State who have intervened in the matter. But their concerns are clear. They have a problem, specifically with Bank of Ghana, intervening in the current circumstances. Bank of Ghana has attempted to fix inflation by raising interest rates. They said, you are just worsening the situation. You are not making things better. What you are doing is that, aside the inflation that is denying us customers, you are also making it difficult for us to get loans to replace our capital that we are losing because of rising exchange rates. So exchange rates, the city's performance against the major trading currencies, that's the dollar, the pound, the euro, among others. And then they are talking about interest rates that they blame on the Bank of Ghana and the inflation issue that they blame on inactivity. There are several other issues they are raising, including I found out this way that actually locals are doing 15% of the imports, the 75% of the imports are actually done by foreign nationals based here in Ghana. Well, that will be our second discussion. And then our third topic, we will go to the special prosecutor. He's decided to expand his tentacles in the Tama Harbor. He wants to look into auction cars from 2016. So those are the issues we'll be discussing today. And joining me uh, for the discussion today, let me start from my left. Felix Kwachofosu is a former deputy Minister for Communications and an aide to former President John Dramani Mahama. And then we have Solomon who joined us this week again. Always wonderful to have Solo in the studio. And we're grateful to him always. He's a member of the MPP's communication team. He has a new director, by the way. None other but our own friend Richard Ahiagba, who is now in charge. And then uh, moving close, closer to the right is uh, Alaji ABA Fusemi, who is member of Parliament for Senior Ogo. He's actually Basically, the spokesperson for the minority in parliament. And then we'll be joined by Amapat, who is channel manager here at Pan African Television, to complete our panel. We'll take a short break. We'll come back. We are talking, who do we blame? Phyllis is making an interesting proposition. He is put <laughs> a bed for it to be blamed. So he'll start the discussion for us. We are back shortly. He's the Done anything, so we have to swallow if you have a goal to embark on our demonstration. And trust you me, we are going to make a definite statement on Monday. And our members have told us that they didn't even want one day and that we should do it for two days. Thereafter, the regents were calling for um, one week and that we were going to follow it up the following week with a, a, a closure. So, because um, our a problem is such that we, um, we, we need a solution and that we need something that will um, 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 uh, give a pinch to the leadership. And that's what we wanted to do this. We, didn't do, we were not going to do this out of malice. So when Council of State, out of its own wisdom, called us, we had earlier um, been called by the National Security, the, um, the Trade Ministry, and then also the uh, finance uh, ministry. And then we have had joint meetings and all that. And very interesting discussion were um, um, uh, 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 put on. And especially here too, we have been able to engage with the uh, good uh, council coming from um, our um, council of state. And that um, we have now toned down on our demands and then um, like the advice that they have given, Nana has given us with, the, with uh, his council, we are going to um, stop our, uh, the close down on Monday 
and then the committee that have been set by the eminent body um, will take effect for Monday and that from that time we are going to work till a month where we are expecting that within that time those issues because we have 10 items that and welcome we back from that break you're watching the mother of all talk shows Alaji and Alaji live from the studios of and on Pan-African television we are live on radio on radio code thank you very much for joining us once again so let's start with our very first discussion on President Kufu Addo saying his government is not to blame for the road to the IMF. Like I said, I'm starting with Felix Kwachiofosu. Good morning, Felix. Yeah, good morning, Senna. Well, um, a lot of commentary has been run on the performance of President Akufu Addo and many of the missteps that he has taken, which missteps have brought us to this very perilous point. But on a daily basis, he continues to leave even his critics shocked at the level of deterioration in governance that he has suffered. As I have said before, and I would repeat again, I have never been his fan. I have been a long-standing critic of his. I didn't expect much to come out of him. Because unlike others who were misled by the artifice in which he had been draped, the borrowed gap that was put on him to sanitize his image and make him appear like some saintly being who was on hand to, as it were, salvage the fortunes of this country and take us to the promised land. I saw through it. I knew that he wasn't offering much. And all the claims he was making about being able to transform the fortunes of this country were only designed to hoodwink the electorates and give him power. For him, political power is just about fulfilling a personal desire to do what others had also done. So he could say that he was once president of Ghana. Beyond that, there's been nothing substantive, nothing substantive that has moved this country forward any more than he came to meet it. Indeed, I would argue, and the evidence is clear, that he has set us back by several years with the kind of leadership that he has offered. So, I thought that it was bad enough that he had brought us to this point. And that from this point onwards, he was going to show a semblance of leadership and offer to the people of Ghana a compelling reason to go along with him to address whatever difficulties that his own mismanagement and very poor governance had unleashed on us. But even for a fierce critic of his, I have been left totally shocked at his recent pronouncements and utterances. You see, at a time when we are all brooding over terrible economic conditions, at a time when everybody is suffering, there's a lot of anxiety and pain and suffering and anguish, desperation. I mean, you can cut it to the knife. It is palpable. People are simply not able to bear it. How to make ends meet it's a huge problem for many people. What you eat in a day is a major problem for several millions of Ghanaian households. How young people are going to find jobs has become a major obstacle in their lives. Now, at this point, what you expect is sober leadership. You know, a leadership that reflects the mood of the people. A leadership that is responsive to the aspirations of the people. Leadership that at the very least gives an impression that it recognizes what everybody is going through and that it is determined to address the problem so that all of us may get some respite. But instead of that kind of leadership, what we have been offered is excessive partisanship. Amateurish partisanship on the part of a man who is supposed to be one of the most experienced individuals on the political landscape. You would think that this is a political novice who has just been sprung on the people of Ghana. And he goes about making provocative statements 
statements that incense the lungs of Ghanaian. Now he says that the decision to go to the IMF should not be blamed on him and his government. Because unlike in 2015, when he went to the IMF, this one is due to good management. This one is due to a stellar, fantastic performance. But in 2015, when we went, it was due to mismanagement. So mismanagement took us to the IMF in 2015. Excellent management has taken us to the IMF in 2022. I mean, the logic of this is staggering. It is shocking. How does a president insult his own people in this manner? What does he take the people of Ghana for? So because people went to Q in their millions and voted for him, they deserve this kind of insult from him. He must stamp his nose in our faces in this manner. Because Ghanaians decided that they will elect him to the president and give him all the necessary conditions to work in their interest. He believes that he has earned the right to disrespect the people that he governs. So suddenly we have all become dancers, children, toddlers, who cannot reason. And so we must be told ridiculous tales. Now anything at all that he likes, he should tell us. Because he is called Nana Akufuado. He has golden blood running through his veins. He is a god, a ten god. So whatever he feels like, he must tell us. Why? On the same trail, he also said that the NDC will be in opposition forever. Because his management has been fantastic. And that all that he is interested in is to break the eight for the MPP. This is the very worst kind of leadership that I have ever seen in my entire life. I have never seen a Ghanaian president reduce the presidency to this level. I was around when President Kufo was in charge. We all we killed him. We all hounded him. We criticized him. We had our pot shots at him. But never did he reduce the presidency to this level. When President Kufo was in president, there was also some difficulty between 2007 to 2008. I recall that he actually addressed the nation one evening when prices of goods and services started rising and offered some explanation. We disagreed indeed. At the very time that he was reading that script, we were also writing our response. So within five minutes of finishing, we published our response. That is how tightly, how closely we marked President Kufo. And then he proposed what he believed were mitigating measures to ease the suffering. Even if you disagreed with what he was proposing, at least he made an effort to carry the citizens around. He did not come and shift blame onto the government he had replaced eight years earlier. President Mills was president. We saw him. Very dignified statesman. Who will not utter these words in response to genuine and legitimate complaints from the citizens that they are suffering? We also saw President Mahama. When he became president, President Mahama did not climb electric poles and cut off wires and plunge us into darkness. He, it was just unfortunate that his tenor coincided with a major national problem, which was power shortages. What did he do? He went to parliament, where the elected representatives of people, of the Ghanaian people, work, and told them that he takes responsibility for the problem that we were having at the time. Though he is aware that it is a long-standing problem, he takes responsibility, and that unlike in the past, when governments have attempted to manage it and address, address it as and when we have moved along, he would take comprehensive measures to address it once and for all. This was in 2015. When he was coming under attacks from President Akufuado and Elijah Baumia and all the MPP apparatus, he took responsibility. He did not go and blame President Kufuor. And true to his words, he put in place measures to address the problem to everybody's satisfaction in this country. Then, in spite of all this work, President Kufado comes to tell us that he will transform Ghana in 18 months, that he should be tried. 
that all his life he has been prepared for the presidency. He's the most prepared person. Indeed, had he never become president, we would have been told that he's the greatest president we never had. And all of that razzmatazz, all that hoopla that he engaged in to win elections, this is the outcome. Staggering, unprecedented levels of incompetence and hopelessness. And on top of that, he is adding irresponsibility. Leadership irresponsibility. At, the, at this moment, we don't have a leader in Ghana. We are a leaderless, rudderless society. We are like a ship that is wrecked. We are just drifting in any direction that the currents send us. No leadership whatsoever. You will think that even the most craving banana republic has better leadership than we have at the moment. Even war-torn countries, countries with political instability, are better managed than the way we are being governed. Which responsible leader will make these statements? How do you come and tell the people of Ghana that they should bypass you and go and blame others for the terrible situation that we are, we are in? Who does not know that it was his reckless economic decisions that have plunged us into this, this chaos? Senna, no matter how many times President Akufuadu attempts to shift blame, we will never relent in letting the people of Ghana know that the claims he is making are false. First of all, it is not COVID or Ukraine or any conflict they have with Russia that has sent us to the IMF. It is President Akufuadu's mismanagement and incompetence and the recklessness of his government, of his economic team led by Alaji Baumia that have plunged us into this crisis. Long before COVID-19 showed up, our economy was deteriorating. Indeed, the only year in which you can say there was some semblance of economic stability was in 2017. And that was because we were under an IMF program. When we went into difficulty in 2015, President Mama did not run around blaming others. He acted as a responsible leader should. Look, on the 16th of August 2015, when the call was, so 2014, when the call was made to the IMF, we already had a blueprint. We had a document called the Homegrown Solutions that we presented to the IMF for consideration. The day that the call was made, the document was ready. So President Mama knew what he was doing. He knew what he was about. He knew that life is full of ups and downs. They are vicissitudes. So there are days when things are good. There are days when things are bad. It happens all the time. It is nothing strange. But when things are good, you must show responsibility and moderation in the way that you govern. When things are bad, you must take responsibility as a leader and boldly confront the problems that you are facing. That is precisely what President Mahama did. So we went to the IMF very prepared. Because of that, it didn't take us long to get a program. And then we began to do the things that will bring the economy back on track. In any event, the problems that we had at the time come nowhere near the terrible economic situations we are facing today. But even then, President Mahama acted proactively to avert a further slide into chaos. By 2017, things had begun to pick up. So all the mod modest gains we made at that, at, that, at that time were attributable to what had been done before. In fact, in 2016, every single notable financial institution in the world predicted that our economy was going to pick up because of the measures we had put in place. In 2016, we had an election, yet we recorded one of the lowest budget deficits in our history of 6.1%. Indeed, the previous year, 2015, we had about 5% budget deficit. Our debt was within manageable limits. It was just 120 billion Ghana cities when we left power. 120 billion Ghana cities. And that is from Nkrumah's time to President Mahama's time. If you compare it to our GDP, it was just 56%. It means that we had a lot of bidding space. All the amount of money that we used to pay for interest 
was just about 11 billion Ghana cities. That's interest and amortization. Our total debt service budget was just 11 billion Ghana cities. So it meant that about 38% of our revenue was going into doing that. So there was fiscal space for us to do all the things that we did within the limited amount of resources that the rule of Ghana gave to President Mahama. So when President Kufari took over, everything had been done for him. He didn't have to do any significant work. Then 2018 came. Signs of economic mismanagement and recklessness started showing up. By 2018, he had begun to spend more money than we actually had. So when the year ended and the analysis was done, our deficit had risen from 6.1 in 2016 to 7.5%. Meanwhile, the band that you are allowed was 5%. If you go be beyond this, it should be about 6%. But they went to 7.5%. The following year, 2019, it went to 7%. And they were hiding these figures. You know, they go to the IMF and give them the accurate figures. And then they come here and tell lies that their deficit was below 5%. Indeed, Honorable A.B. Fuseni is a member of parliament. He, rem he will remember that in the 2020 budget, Kenufuraka claimed that for three successive years, he had kept the deficit under 5%. That was a blatant lie. Meanwhile, the documents that they sent to the IMF, every year, the IMF comes to do what they call Article 4 consultations. Basically, they go to every member country and assess their economic performance. When they go to the country, they ask you to give them an update on the performance of the economy. They were telling the IMF that our deficit was 7.5%. Yeah, they were telling the MPs in Ghana that it was under 5%. They lied through their teeth. When that happened, President Mahama and the leadership of the minority in parliament drew attention that, look, what you are doing will lead to economic difficulties because you are hiding the true state of the economy. At the same time, our debt was going up. By 2019, our debt had crossed 200 billion Ghana cities, heading towards 300 billion. So it was almost near 70%. And the effect of it was that now our interest and debt service payments were going up. So it was squeezing out what government could get to do all the other things that it had to do within the fiscal year. And then they kept on introducing ad hoc programs, all tailored to win elections rather than improve the fortunes of this country. Then when they go and sleep, and they get a brainwave, then they will announce some slogan and channel billions of Ghana cities into it. Most of it were just transactional. All that it was meant to do was to line their pockets with taxpayers' money in the name of so called interventions. Slogans, that meant nothing. You go into those programs and see that the money is going down the drain and then they are accumulating huge debts. That were adding on to the problems that we were facing. Then COVID came in 2020. When COVID came, what was the responsibility of government? COVID was a public health crisis. So it meant that government had to invest in measures that would secure the citizens, prevent you and I from contracting the disease or dying off. That is the first obligation that every government around the world had towards these people. Then there was a point where government had to do a lockdown for two weeks, which meant that people could not go and come and live off their economic activity. So government had to support them. But that was a very limited activity. After two weeks, government opened up and life returned to normal. Of course, there were one or two sectors like transport, especially aviation, that were affected because people simply could not travel. And then the tourism sector, because people simply could not move from one place to, to the other. So those were affected. But every other sector was running. Nothing ground to a halt in this country apart from those two weeks of the lockdown. So government's responsibility was to protect people for those two weeks. And then after that, go back to doing what was absolutely necessary to secure us against the pandemic. But what happened? They noticed that elections were coming. So in order to create a feel-good factor, they threw in all manner of things, threw in money that we did not have lived way beyond our means as a country. I contested the election, so I know what they did. They sent money to their party executives from branch to national level using COVID funds so that they could oil their war machinery for the election. 
at least you have heard they are national sorry they are second vice chairman in the northern region who was alaji abu fusenis exactly alaji abu fusenis was it pro, pro antagonist he was alaji abu fusenis he, he was alaji abu fusenis antagonist in the 2020 elections she said that she received about 100,000 ghana cities as the regional vice chairman and then another hundred thousand as Felix, parliamentary candidates that, that is a quota that's a quota and then <laughs> another hundred thousand or so as a candidate and that, that is what they did nationwide so all the 30 billion Ghana cities that we got in support from multiple sources that is how they dissipated the funds they borrowed 10 billion Ghana cities from the bank of ghana that year so when the elections were over and we did the assessment by the first quarter of 2021 it was clear that they had raped and stolen Ghana's wealth. And so we didn't have anything to live off. We detected that our deficit now was 15.7%, the biggest anywhere in the world. Our debt had jumped to over 300 billion Ghana cities. That was the time that a responsible leader should have gone to the IMF. What had happened was that because of how terribly our economy had done, the investors that we deal with, those who lent us money, every year we went to the euro bond market to get $3 billion to shore up our foreign reserves so that we, our currency does not depreciate. Because essentially it's a demand and supply issue. You must have sufficient foreign currency to be able to trade and bring in the essential items that people need. If you don't have sufficient, the little that is left will be scrambled for and your currency will tumble. So it was key that we had access to the international bond market to do this. But the investors realized that no, in 2020 or 2021, we used 92% of all the taxes we collected to service our debts. If I break it down into proper numbers, we got 57 billion Ghana cities in total taxes. We used 51 billion to pay interest and amortization that year. So that left government with what? Just six billion, and then some other source of revenue to do everything else that he had to do. So the investors saw that no, if we continue to do business with these people and lend them these kinds of monies, very very soon they will not be able to pay back because they will be cash trapped. So they closed this out by October 2021. They had decided that they were going to raise the interest on the bonds that they bought so that it will discourage us from going there. That's what they mean by shutting you out of the international bond market. So. For one year, we have not had access to the place. That is how come we have not had sufficient dollars of foreign currency to bolster our reserves. Because of that, our reserves have depleted by $2 billion in the space of one year. Because of that, all the international rating agencies have downgraded us. We are seven points below the optimal place where you should be before anybody tries to lend you money. Because of that, our currency now is the worst performing in the world. This year, it has depreciated within a matter of eight months. It has moved from six cities to 10.5 cities. That is a decline of 43%. Next year, it will decline by 31%. Next year, it will go to 11, 12 cities. Yes, it will go to about 12, 13 cities next year. So after all of this, your inflation, because your currency has depreciated, it means that importers, they have to collect more CDs to buy the same amount of dollars. And they are not charity organizations. I'm sure Mami is scratching her head how she is going to pay salaries at the end of the month at this place. Now, the importers and businessmen have to find more CDs to get the same amount of dollars. They are not charity organizations. They are in for profit. Because it will eat into their profit. So they must increase the price or cost of the things that they sell. At the same time, too, they removed the re uh, reductions in benchmark values. So, even before the dollar depreciated, imports at the port became more expensive because duty payments went up. Again, through reckless political decision making by Akufuadu and Baumia. They just wanted importers to clap for them. So, they went to do a reversal of benchmark revenues at the time when it was completely unnecessary. So now our inflation is 32%. And it will go up, I'm sure in the next two weeks or so, 
the Saskatchewan Service will announce announced inflation for August. You will see that it's gone up. At least inflation will be about 40 percent by the end of this year. That's even official. There are others who believe that it's around 80 percent. But let us even accept the official figure. It has moved from 8 percent just in March 2021 to 32 percent in July 2022. Within a space of one year, look at the level of deterioration. All this while, it was clear, at least at the beginning or by the middle of last year, that we should go to the IMF to avoid this decline. But what did President Kufa do? He was thinking about breaking the eight. He knew that because of the cheap, cheap pedestrian propaganda he and Alaji Baumia engaged him around our IMF program, we will slaughter them politically. We will put them to the sword and make them objects of mockery. And for the partisan person that he is, he, that, he forgot that he was president of a country and not the leader of the MPP. He thought that saving the blushes of his party and preventing people like myself from ridiculing him and his incompetent, hopeless head of the management team of his, the economy, he had to stay the decision and engage in grandstanding. It's not like he had an alternative. He didn't have any alternative. Because now it's clear that they are totally empty. They don't have a clue as to the management of the economy. They didn't have an alternative. It's not like his, his foot was on some stone, as they say. That if a blind man threatens to stone you, he may have his foot on some stone. He didn't have any stone. Completely empty. No ideas anywhere. And yet he refused to go to the IMF. He rather preferred to destroy the economy rather than give the NDC political capital. So they waited and waited and waited. Do you know what ultimately pushed them to the IMF? We were on the verge of defaulting on servicing our loans. What had happened was that not only had investors shut us out of the international bond market, there are some of the bonds that we sell domestically that foreign investors come to buy. Now, when they come to buy, we have an agreement with them that any day they decide to pull out, you give them all their money, and you give the money to them in dollars, the same currency that they brought you. So at the beginning of this year, about 35% of all the domestic bonds we had issued was held by foreigners. So they started pulling out. As I speak to you, it has dropped to 11%. And when they pull out, they will take away their dollars. So the currency started depreciating. And they didn't have enough dollars to be able to service our debt. And as for debt default, if you default on your debt, you are finished as a country. That was the only thing that pushed Akufado to accept the IMF deal. If they had done this a year ago, we wouldn't be here. So, without a shadow of doubt, it is President Kufuado's economic mismanagement, the hopelessness, the deliberate decision to destroy this economy for partisan gain that took us to the IMF. Yeah, we're wrapping up. COVID didn't do any more damage to Ghana than it did to any other country. Yet, Senna, all our neighbors don't have anywhere near the terrible economic situation that we are in. Go and check inflation in Cote d'Ivoire. Check their currency. Check their deficit. Check their debt. Whether it is anywhere close to what we have. So, President Akufado should accept responsibility and stop this, this joke that we should go and blame. That's why I said earlier this week that perhaps I should put my grandmother's parents up for blame. The parents should be asked why he has plunged us into this economic crisis. What kind of childish excuse is this? This is childish. I do not expect it from no less a person than the president of this republic. He must respect the people. It is bad enough that you are making people suffer. But don't insult them on top. And then this fixation he has about breaking the it. Is this a time to be talking like this? Is this a time for partisanship? Is this not a time for statesmanship? Is this not the time that you should be building bridges with all sectors of our national life? With all players, anybody who has a stake in our country, to find common ground on these matters, so that even if you have to implement difficult policies as a as part of the effort to get out of this mess, you get societal buying. You are rather creating more fishes in society. You are dividing the country even further with these reckless pronouncements. Why? And he thinks that after all this horrible performance, Daniels will, will wake up and go and queue and vote for the MPP to continue, to put them in this mess. Why? Because he is called Akufuado. 
we've not seen a sort of human being before. Or perhaps he thinks that because he's commander-in-chief, he commands the Ghana army. So he will deploy them to kill people like they did in 2020. Or that he has some laptop team of bandits who call themselves invisible forces, delta forces, and what have you. So they will unleash them and they gather people to intimidate them to vote for him. As I've said before, Senna, he can roll out the tanks, all the tanks that the Ghana army has. Take them to every police station, gun down anybody on site, the young people will still lose. There's nothing that will save this party because of the way that they have governed. The disrespect they've shown to the people of Ghana. Why? Does President Kufwadi believe that the people of Ghana voted for him because of his name? He has forgotten that they rejected him twice in 2008 and 2012. They were the same people who voted for him. So they are not to be taken for granted. They are not to be trifled with at all, the Ghanaian voter, Ghanaian voters. The same people who made him will not make his party. Because the conditions under which they voted against the NDC were far better than what we have today. Okay. When they elected him, they expected a certain level of performance. They expected that their lives would improve. Today, they have a complete deterioration in their lives. The hardship they are going through, are up, they've never happened under the Fourth Republic. They, our currency has not depreciated to this level before. This sort of hardship we are feeling has never happened in our lives. Today, what is government able to do? When you speak, you say, oh, we have free SHS. Go and look at the state of squalor under which our children live in senior high schools. The food that President Akufuado's dogs eat in his house is better than what our children are eating in secondary schools. And the reason is simple. He doesn't have any money after he pays interest. To be. Look, in the first half of this year alone, he spent 86% of tax revenue to service debt. They collected 37 billion Ghana cities. Sorry, 30 billion Ghana cities in taxes. They spent 26 billion servicing debt. So he has only 4 billion and some other money from other sources of revenue, other sources, to do everything else. So today, they owe everybody that they do business with. Okay. And businesses are collapsing because of this. Okay. So now, let me indicate that there's a prior uh, activity that I had committed to, but I could not turn down your invitation. So just give me our five minutes to address the Guta matter. Then I will uh, respectfully ask leave of you to go and continue. It's extremely important. I beg you. I've never done this before, but I have to because of the circumstances. Yes. Uh, as a, I'm not like a crow boy, do say. <laughs> Who could divide himself into two? <laughs> I mean, figuratively. I'm going to two places. You see, Guta, you see, the case they are making raises a number of issues. You see, they gave approbation to President Akufo in 2016. As an organization, that should fend or fight for their welfare. They chose to take sides with a man who had offered nothing in 2016. They told us that they financed President Kufuadu's campaign to the tune of $200,000 in Ghana cities. They boldly stated it, thinking that they were offering support to a man who was going to enhance their fortunes. Look at what he has done to them. We in the NDC didn't do this to them. So this is their own man doing this to them. They have a right as an association, as an organization, to associate with whoever they want. But let them be guided going forward. That you don't just embrace anybody because he has thrown himself at you. That we must we must watch before we leap. And it is the same. There are many in this society who simply refuse to see Akufado and Bamiya for who they are. They pretend that they have not seen what they are doing to this country. The destruction that they are, they, are, they, are, they are bringing upon the heads of the people of Ghana. Because Guta are traders. They are the worst affected by the decline in the dollar. Their entire livelihoods have vanished into thin air. Because their margins have been uh, taken up by the rapid depreciation of the currency. Inflation affects them because when their prices also go up, it affects patronage of their business, because people can only buy what they can afford. If they cannot afford it, they won't show up. So your stock will be in the warehouse. Meanwhile, you are paying servicing interest on your loan. 
the Bank of Honor too consistently raises the interest rate. So they are really boxed into a corner because of the mismanagement of the Akufuado administration. So I will urge them that the same way they showed support for him, they should withdraw that support and support a group that will rescue them from this malice. Let them not give the impression to Akufuado that he can do whatever he likes and still cause their support. When you do that, you sell yourself short. short. Your interest, their interest, lies in the success of their business. That is what should matter to them. So when you repose confidence in somebody who has proven incapable of doing things to enhance your welfare, you don't continue to lend support to him. So they must be bold and confident. Let them not allow their leaders to align them on the basis of their own political preferences. Today, I hear church leaders. Yesterday, one of them was quoted as saying that Ghanaians are lazy. They should stop being lazy and work and stop relying on government. Meanwhile, the same church leaders were attacking and harassing the NDC administration for less serious economic problems. When you live in a society like that, we have the kind of thing that you have. You are more coddling a hopelessly incompetent government. You are giving approbation to a government that you should disavow. You are prodding on a government that is destroying our country with that kind of behavior. So prejudice must be removed from the equation. And an objective, fair analysis carried out on our national situation by everybody concerned. That is the only way that you can push leaders to work. You see, Ghanaians do not owe the NDC or the MPP political power. They owe themselves a good life and a well-managed country. So it is the one who does that that you give support to. Support based on tribal or ethnic or religious or other prejudicial considerations lead to the sort of destruction that we are finding ourselves in. So the MPP has been pampered. It's like, they are like that spoiled child. They have everything on a silver platter, so they have no regard for how that silver platter came to be created. They don't know that it is other people's sweat that has given them that opportunity. So they don't respect the mandate that they get. As far as they are concerned, the mandate is only to enhance their own personal fortunes. Look at what the president has done. He has installed the most nepotistic government in the whole world. At the last reckoning, there were over 65 people who are directly related to the president or are known associates of his. Look at the behavior of the finance minister. Yesterday, he was pictured with the IMF managing director begging for $3 billion. Meanwhile, only a few months ago, he swore that come rain or, or, or high weather, he will never go there. Meanwhile, as we have sunk deeper into debt, the stock of his company has risen. His company's fortunes have an inverse relationship with our debt position. The more debt we incur, the more money he makes as an finance minister. Because I don't know of any situation in this world where a finance minister picks his own company to advise him on how to borrow and, and takes commission for sale. Finish, and the president, oh, yes, 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 yes minutes, no problem, so. just, just one more minute. The president <laughs> says this is an outstanding performance. So those calling for the finance minister's head for him to be removed, he says that we are NDC people or we are jobless. As if it is not his responsibility in any event to create the conditions for job creation, to employ all these people who are jobless. If people are jobless and they are demanding better performance from you, are you not obliged to heed their calls? The president says his team has been fantastic. The dollar has moved from around 4 CDs in 2016 to 10.5 CDs today. It is fantastic. It is an outstanding job. We have the worst credit ratings in our history. It is a fantastic job. Our debt is now 430 billion almost 90 percent of debt to gdp ratio it is a fantastic job it is better than having a debt of 120 billion those who left us with 120 billion were hopeless but those who have left us with 430 billion and counting are fantastic they are they are historic achievers they are prima donnas. they can be compared to the very best anywhere in the world so they should be left in place he is very happy about their output and performance so because of that Ghanaians will queue and go and vote for him and thank him for inflicting this pain and suffering on him. You see, the president must come out of that delusional bubble that he is firmly ensconced in. He managed to mislead 
or better still fool Ghanaians into voting for him on two occasions. You see, let him not think that he can build an air of invincibility around himself. He has done nothing special. Winning two elections is nothing special. Every party that has come to government since 1992 has done two terms in power. In 2020, the MPP did two terms, the same as the NDC had. They have been in power four times, you have been in power four times. So he has done nothing special. Let him not be misled by the fact that he got re election in 2020 into thinking that Ghanaians love the MPP so much okay. that anything they do will be approved of. And as I've said, if he is thinking that the political stooges in the, the puppets he has installed at the Electoral Commission through unreasonable things like restricting registration to guest Ghana card, when millions of people in Ghana do not have it, are the things that will enable him steal elections and install a puppet to cover up for the rot and corruption and misdeeds that he has supervised, then he is grossly mistaken. Okay. The same Ghanaians who you, threw him out in 2008 and 2012 who will take back their country and show him the month in which corn is planted, as we say colloquially. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Sir Dan, I thank you very much thank for you. the opportunity. I wish that I could have stayed here with you because the the corruption at customs and the work of the social prosecutor is something that interests me. Unfortunately, I'm not able because of your time to do it. But I promise to be here another time okay. to continue for. But as thank I'm you. going, I will go and consult my grandma Desparot <laughs> and find out from him why he should not be blamed for the decision to go to the IMF and the terrible economic situation that we are in. Because President Kufadu apparently says we should blame him, the parrot, and thank not you. him. Thank you. Yes, as if the call to the IMF managing director thank you. was done by my grandma Desparot. Thank you. Uh, we'll, take a, we'll take a brief break. Felix yeah. will take leave of us, and then we'll still have uh, the strong panel that we have this morning. Very colorful panel. When you leave, the panel will be very colorful. There's a pregnant problem at home, so I'll have you be able to say this. We have yeah. actually. <laughs> He has labored, he has suffered to lead. Trasaco Estates. Home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs. A premium master plan community of service plots surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget, and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call on 055-659-2658. Thank you very much for staying with us on Pan-African Television uh, and also on Radio Gold. Let me read a few of your messages. Joe Skin is joining us, saying a good morning to us, watching us live from Lagos. Uh, there's Judy Mensah, who says, please, Ekufuado has never won anything in life, including elections. He's a fictional character who only knows how to bribe his way through governance. You see, Mustafa Yaya said, what a confused president. Today, he blamed COVID and Russia-Ukraine war. Data said it's, it is God. And now it is the past government. What a president. Like Mahama last said, do you know how what it takes to be president? Oh, he has seen it. Eric Okusapani says, Senna, it is long overdue to review our investment blocks. Tax-free holiday for bogus investors should not be entertained in our economic development paradigm. Thomas Mamuri says, uh, good morning to us. And I could must know that leaders take responsibility instead of giving excuses. Idris Kipo is also joining us. Uh, okay. Uh, Yakubo Paul Asana says the true length of a frog can't be measured well unless it is dead. The vice president should come and project to us with data on why his government should not be blamed. Edward Sarasibi says great, great oratory, but these guys are the same in opposition. In government, they act otherwise. 
who can really salvage Ghana but ourselves. Dennis Yaquete is joining us. As I argued before, blaming COVID-19 entirely for Ghana's problem as if Ghana was the only country hit by the COVID-19 is akin to six at least going to take a 100 meter race. But before the race, all of them were diagnosed to have suffered from malaria and yet they had to take the race anyway and agreed by all. But after the race, the athlete who registered the last position now says malaria should be blamed for his or her inability to perform. Instead, when indeed, all the athletes suffered from the same malaria and cleared to participate in the race. This is exactly what the President Nana Ekufuado led MPP administration is doing. As if it was also COVID-19 that was responsible for the gargantuan corruption and the greed that dissipated our resources. Just too bad. That's coming from Dennis Yaquete. In Tel Aviv, says our politicians should learn to be humble and serve the people. They need to understand that respect is sent and also realize the sense of agency with which things need to be done. Every party is on the right side when they oppose. Abba, the youth are dying, the youth are tired, and send special greetings to. Okay, Mr. Kwesi Prajinia. Blessings, he says. Mano James says, Kenneth Oyata has, has forcibly discharged himself. From his hospital bed after hearing that seven fifty dollars, seven fifty million dollars have hit the bank account of Bank of Ghana. <laughs> That's coming from Mano James. Uh, Korea Donko, the, okay, the big two on any on Alaja and Alaja. Good work done for Ghana. Thanks to you. Good one there. Uh, he says with together with togetherness that all together togetherness is all that the NDC needs. My yes have to be yes and my no has to be no. Your yes has to be yes and your no has to be no. C. Uh, Spotake is also joining us. I hope all of you are good. The good Lord Almighty bless you and grant you a good life. Please continue to telling us the truth and Ghanaians wake up from this non-performing MPP government and set yourself free and make Ghana what she is. There's uh, Eric Kokusepenu who says, Good morning. MPP and Anna Kufuado are deceptive as a government. It's high time we invoke the relevant clauses of the oath of office to impeach this government. Enough is enough. There's Yakubu Paul Asana, who is joining us. He says, corruption is using public office for private business. PLO Lumumba, he is quoting. So whose government then should we should be blamed? The vulnerable citizens of Ghana, right? I thought they constituted solid economic team. Dishonesty and opacity are elements of corruption. However, he's entitled to his opinion. But even the fishes in the sea are aware of his luxurious private jet usage and the misappropriation of state funds are the reasons we are at the IMF. Victor Thompson is also joining us. President Kufuado will go down as the most irresponsible president in the history of Ghana. He's always blaming his recklessness, incompetence, and failure on others. He's never taking responsibility of anything as a leader. What a terrible president we have. Alassane Hamdan is also joining us on Facebook. MPP have taken Ghanaians for granted. They believe Ghanaians, we don't think. They believe we are empty-headed people. So anything they said to us, we are going to believe. Okay. The president should tell us, if we cannot blame his government to speak to IMF, then who are we going to blame? Is he expecting us to blame John Mahama or who? Jack Bo Adam is also joining us. Senna, I feel so sad and bad for the, for the West that we have been left on. We are on, okay, we are no more independent again. So we need to restart to fight for a new independent Ghana. Um, okay, so those are some of the messages you are sending to us via Facebook. I was reading from our Facebook page. So send, keep sending in those comments. I'll read as many as I can as we go along in the show. Solomon also is now to my immediate left. And let's listen to him. Uh, good morning, sir, and good morning to co-panelists. Uh, listening to Felix, uh, if you are a first-timer in Ghana, you would feel that uh, Ghana was somewhat in paradise between 2013 to 2016 when the NDC exited power. And indeed, uh, those that have lived in this country over the period would know that he just came to speak the opposite as to what was really happening in Ghana. Let me first of all thank those that have been appointed into various positions in the NPP. Uh, I would wish them the best of luck and also admonish them to behave properly within the confines of the law so that together we can push this public tradition forward from where it is now. Whilst I congratulating them, let me also urge our brothers in the NDC, especially those in the northern region, to let peace remain. Let peace
peace reign in their affairs. By no child, in fact, no violence. Violence is not good for anybody. So let us all embrace peace. Shana Ayam, principle of equalization. Our brothers in the NDC are so happy that finally the NPP also decided to go to the IMF so that, like we say in our local balance, that is all to it. Either than that, you will not see the head and tail of it. If you look at our trajectory as a country, this is the 17th time we are engaging the IMF. Since the 1966 to date, the NDC, if you look at the number of times that we have gone to the IMF, they have gone there more than any government put together from the PNDC to the NDC. Yet our brothers are so happy and criticizing the government for going back. It's all about equalization. So now when you listen to the entire interview that the president had with uh, Bad FM in Savannah, uh, it does not suggest to me that the headline did justice what he really wanted to put across. I mean, it tells you that the president and the government, and for that matter, the people of this country, are not happy going back to the IMF. And if I were the IMF, I would be very much concerned that an institution that Ghana is supposed to be part of it, when we decide to seek help from them, our people are not happy. Why would the Ghanaian back to the IMF? and creating jobs within member countries. The question you ask yourself is whether or not on the 17th time that we have been able, they have been able to stabilize our economies, they have been able to promote macroeconomic growth, whereby job creation has been increased. The answer is an emphatic no. We go there and come up west. In fact, if you remember the last time we engaged the IMS under the IMF under the John, John Mahama uh, uh, Professor Mills administration, they, they advised us on, to put a freeze on a, what do you call it, on employment. You understand? And so, an, an organization or a fund that seeks to promote job creation, how on earth would you advise a government to put a freeze on public sector uh, employment? It tells you that. They don't mean what they, they suggest. But the question that I want Ghanaians to ask ourselves is that why do we always go in and then come out and still go in? It tells you that there are certain fundamentals that we are not doing right. I mean, they always come in, the IMF comes in to us to support us in our balance of payment. And so the number of times we have gone there all has to do with our balance of payment position. What are we not doing right? To make sure that we are always solid when it comes to our balance of payment position. That for me should guide us. Either than that, NBB will, will, will leave power, NDC comes, the same problem, we blame ourselves, and the ordinary Ghanaian will suffer. That for me is not progressive society. And so that is how come as a government, and that's why I say the, the, the headline is very deceptive. In the same interview, the president enumerated a number of things that we are doing to make sure that when we exit again, we will not go back. If you look at the structure of our economy, Senna, we are importing more than we export. What do you expect? Is it the case that the kind of graduates, the kind of human resource we have in this country have no such capacity to be doing things on our own? I don't think so. I don't think so. But it's because of policy framework. And that is how come we have introduced a number of policies with the aim of growing the Ghanaian economy because the critical sectors of the economy are not in our hands and we seem to be shying away from it. If you don't have your mining sector in your hands, if you don't have your telecommunication in your hands, if you don't have the banking sector in your hands, even trading, trading, those that are doing all the bigger volumes of trading in this country are foreigners. Then it becomes a problem. So to this end, government has started a number of measures, including introducing one district, one factory, introducing planting for food and jobs, introduce, improving our energy situation, improving a host of other things so that we can be self-sustaining. That is the only way we can move forward as a country. Now, back to 
the number of things that my brother was saying. Look, whether we like it or not, you can't take COVID out of what we are going through. Nobody. In fact, as we speak today, Europe is in, in terrible shape. Why are they in terrible shape? Because of COVID and also Ukraine. As we speak, Russia has decided to shut down its gas supply to Europe and hell is breaking loose. But for the war, who would have done that? Would Russia have ever, would they have ever thought of shutting down gas? Just flaring it so that they will not supply Europe when they know winter is just nearing? These are all the problems that we are going through. And in any case, Ghana is part of the global economy. Whatever affects one country affects us as well. Look, there is a company in this country for, I don't want to mention their name, because of a supply of a certain chemical, they are going to shut down. Because where the supply of that chemical is going to come from, they are affected by this war. There are a number of companies, because they are not coming out, people are not seeing the real impact. And so all that we as a country have to do is to make sure that we do not do the things that we have been doing over and over again to be getting the same results. And that is precisely what this government is doing. And I was wondering where he was coming from. But it's good he has run away anyway. I knew he would run because he has run away. He, he, he legitimately asked for permission to go and do something. He didn't run away. When he was invited, he like, knew uh, there was a program. Uh, it's not like uh, no, uh, I was going from the president. Do you know the number of programs that have just for this? He's running away from responsibility. Do you know the number of programs that have just come at He has run away because he knows uh, there are a no, lot of factual inaccuracies that I'm going to deal with. Look, it's not fair. That's not fair comment. So the two of you have been on the same couch. So you can be affected by something. So what? Anyway, because of him. Sorry, you must invite him next week so that we sit here and conclude the issue. Yeah, what is, what, what, okay, so, so please make your so point. So what is he running away from? <laughs> the <laughs> issue that he raised are not true. Solid. He can defend any position that he takes. So my he brother, you will defend part Look, of we the issue. The when we tell you that this is a meal, we are holding it by the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Miss. so what have we been doing? The president only spoke truth. And indeed, ever since we went into these crises. We have never shied away from it. You remember on the 30th of March, uh, 2022, my, 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 my brother A.B. Fuseni is in parliament. The president went there to give the state of the true state of the nation's address where he enumerated the challenges that we are going through. Indeed, the finance minister has come up with austerity measures. We all know some of these things. Every day in and day out, I will not be the person to come and sit here and tell you that Senator, the country is not going through some challenges. We all go to the same market. We all know that fuel prices are very high. We all know inflation is very high. We, know, we all know that a uh, base rate or a uh, 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 lending rate is high. Everybody knows what you're going through. But there is a reason for why we are going through it, that we cannot just gloss over it and say on the auto of politics, we will not speak the truth. The Ghanaian knows. And I wonder, any time our brothers try very hard to, as it were, belittle the intelligence of the, of the Ghanaian electorate, that, oh, the NPP, the president lied to them. And that was the reason why they reinstated or voted for the, uh, the NPP again. How could you say that? So any time that the president or the NDC is voted for, do you lie to them? Let us give them some form of respect. And know that the NDC has never helped this country. Has never helped this country. You are in this country. Look, in the worst case scenario that we are all agreeing that we have challenges, difficulty in the economy, your lies are still on. Nobody's talking about that. Meanwhile, he was creating an impression that he, during their time, everything was rosy. No, he didn't say that. Ah, but what did he do here? He just created a, a situation of a very good economy during their time as compared to today. You said they had challenges, but it's not as worse as you So it's been, their time was better than today. Is that not the case? So how can you compare a situation where you were sleeping in darkness to a situation where you are, you are having light as being, as being the same or better than that? Do we prefer being in darkness or being in light in spite of all these challenges? So you can compare the two. And that is how come, because their, their time was so worse, for five consecutive years, we had trade deficit. There was nothing happening uh, on the trade front. We couldn't produce because you cannot produce without electricity or power. And again, he goes on to say that we are trying to, or we, we want to, as it were, rig an election. That is the only way, and that they will go to every corner of this country to make sure we do not win an election. Look, when the Ghanaian will vote for you, it doesn't matter what you say. Mind you, today is the 26th of August, 2022. We have two solid years 
to an election. And that the indices that we are dealing with today will not be the same indices you'll be dealing with when you're going into election of December 2024. So I'm very surprised that our brothers are so confident using the data today. Using the data today that, oh, 2024, things will be the same. How can you, how can you think like that? And it could even be good. And I believe, because at the end of the day, it is the wish of our brothers that things remain so worse for them to take advantage of it. But that is not how you must think as a political party. Because if things become worse, and in an unlikely event that the Ghanaian will repose their confidence in you, how would you be able to come out of that challenge? Are you not going to meet the same problems that, that, that you, we are facing today? So on the contrary, we should rather pray, we should rather help the government as Ghanaians so that we develop and build this country together. I, I, I kind of, I don't sometimes understand where they are coming from with their mantra. Look, this very economy, why we decided to go to the IMF. Nobody can take the NDC out of the blame. Our brothers were in parliament. We had given our revenue measures. We took a budget to parliament. A budget that contains expenditure and revenue. Our brothers wholeheartedly approved the budget. And when you approve a budget, what you have done simply is you have approved the uh, uh, expenditure measures as well as the revenue handles. What did they do afterwards? When they approved the budget, the budget had in the e-levy as one of the ways that we would rake in more revenue to be able to support the budget. Having approved the budget, they just they went back and disagreed. I said they will not approve the e-levy. You have approved the budget, approved the appropriation bill. How well was the budget going to be financed? If not through taxation. When we had projected that we were going to make about six billion, six to seven billion, how much are we going to the IMF to, to, to seek? Annually, one billion. And if you if you could make one billion, then it would have been seven billion. So if you had gotten that money, who would have gone to the IMF? So it's options. It is either you, as a country, do your best to rake in or collect more tax revenue so that you do not go and seek help from the IMF, or you go to the IMF and then deny yourself that tax revenue. Even with that, when you go to the IMF, you will pay back IMF with a very tax, the small tax that you are collecting, to pay them. So why wouldn't we agree for once on revenue measures? So if anybody is to be blamed, it is our brothers who have set a very bad precedent going forward as a country. But what they have done is that in future, maybe in 2018, if they get the opportunity of coming to lead this country, they may have challenges with the side that is in opposition based on what they have done. Now, going forward, I believe that like we are doing now, everybody must be on deck. It is not a hopeless situation. It's a, it's a temporary challenge that definitely will come out because if you look at all the policies and programs that we have put in place, policies and programs do not take just a day or two to mature. It takes a bit of time. If all of us will be patient and then help the government to push the policies forward, my brother, we will still be where we are. And that's why I started by saying that, have we asked ourselves, why the seven years that we have gone there, we keep going back and going forward? Because it's, 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 it's a political football. We go there and people make, uh, the other side makes capital out of it. We come back, we relax, one thing stabilize a bit, we are okay, tomorrow everything crumbles. So if you are going to focus on the local economy to make sure that what the Ghanaian is doing is embraced by all. Look, how many people even Petronas made in Ghana goose? We are in this country. Ghanaians produce things and we don't have Ghanaians buying it. We are so much involved in foreign products that even the small product that we are producing here, we don't want to embrace. How do we build an economy like that? How do we build an economy to withstand the shocks outside when the Ghanaian is denied the very contrast that he has to get, he or she has to get? These are the tiny issues that we must deal with. You know, and that the, the president never, from where I sit and what I read into his delivery, never sought to portray that the decision to go to the IMF was uh, uh, cannot be blamed on the government. Why? Right. I mean, it is not the government that took the decision. On the 1st of July 2020, uh, 2022, that he placed the call. Nobody placed the call for the president. The president placed the call. But he wants to tell Ghanaians that it is not a good situation to be going back to the IMF and that the IMF is not there to satisfy our interest. 
as developing economies. Who has ever succeeded going to the IMF? We always go there, come back, worse off. Look, if you are not careful, if you are not careful, the kind of social interventions we are enjoying today, this IMF program will cause some of them to be lost. And my brother was beautifully talking about free education as being worse off. I have called on the government that this term, I mean, the form ones are going to go back to school on the uh, 5th of September. They must give each parent the receipt, the amount of money they should have paid, and, and say that that receipt paid by the government of Ghana. So the parents would know how much they are being saved by the government of the day. If at the end of the day, our brothers in the NDC feel that, yes, this is how much they were supposed to pay, but uh, they want to pay, then we can quickly take their school fees. And know that, yes, these people do not want to enjoy this educa free education, and now they want to pay back. Either than that, parents have been saved. Can you imagine under this current circumstance, this difficult circumstance, if parents were burdened with the school fees, how are they going to survive? So in all this, in the midst of all these challenges, government is doing its best to meet Ghanaians halfway. It is all about patience. It's all about knowing that this is the only country we have. We cannot kill the, the, throw the baby with the bathwater, but we must always try and protect it. As for them, I listened to him. No policy solution. Did you hear him say anything to the effect that this is what our government, when we can get the opportunity, we will do? There is none. Because we have I seen that. Wrong to this, this so, uh, uh, didn't put policy position for it when he was criticizing them in 2014, 2015, 2016. No, he put, up, he put forward a lot of uh, policy proposals. What? Look, on the issue of the IMF, that when the NDC decided to go to the IMF in 2015, we had told them that they were in manner, they were giving monies for Guinea Fowl and so they shouldn't be doing that. They should stop it. Look, Pia came out with a report that there were a lot of rules that monies have been paid for, but when you go on the ground, people were not doing where lies the where was the supervision? We have told them that the government must be more proactive in monitoring the projects that were going on. They did not listen. Coco Rose, they were just issuing contracts by heart. Anyone, yeah, you passed through uh, TV3, there was an office there, they were just issuing contracts. For no reason. We advised them on all these things, but our brothers will not listen. So not that we did not provide policy alternative. We have told them in opposition that we would do free SHS. Our brothers said it was never going to be possible. My brother here was the lead campaigner, always lambasted free SHS, that it was never going to be possible. Today, we are doing it. So we told them all the beautiful things. We told them in opposition that we will implement uh, 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 one district, one factory. They people put it. So well, how are you going to do it? We gave them all the guidelines and indeed how to do it. They would never listen because it was an NPP program. Remember the, the same NDC when they came to power in 2009, we had moved secondary education from three years to four years. What did they do? They brought it back to three years. So anything to do with the new patriotic party, they do not want to have anything to do with it. And that they believe that we do not have good intention for, for this country. When they rather do not have it. So yes, they have no uh, uh, solutions to this country. I have listened to former president John Mahama, on two occasions. The first one, uh, addressing the uh, Harvard Business Community. What did he say? He blamed the government on two, okay, he called on the government to sack the finance, finance minister and also disbanded the, what do you call it, um, the economic management team. The same way, when he had opportunity at Kempeski, the two recommendations he gave was to sack the finance minister and then get rid of uh, the economic management team. These are only his recommendations, so there is no solution anyway. And, and how Ghanaians look at these deliveries and, and trust the destiny of this country into the care of uh, uh, former President John Maha. In any case, he has been a president before. What is there for him to come back? The luckiest Ghanaian, having been an assemblyman, having been an MP, having been a deputy minister, having been a minister, having been a, a vice president, and a president. Hey, if all of us were going to have this opportunity, what, is this country for him alone? Or the NDC is bereft of leadership, uh, 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 people who can take, that, take up the mantle. So we are not, as a political party, a minute afraid of the NDC. Our mandate, our mandate is to serve the good people of this country in truth and to deliver them into the promised land. And th this we will do. Two years into an election, it's a long period that we will be sitting down here again somewhere in December if God was, then we will be looking at the indices we are talking today and see whether our brothers and sisters from the other side 
will be able to come here and rattle with figures. That inflation is that. Deficit is this. GDP is that. Then we will go to the Ghanaian people. We will tell our story. And they will also go and tell their story. And at the end of the day, I can assure you that the new patriotic party story will be so compelling that no Ghanaian, no Ghanaian, at least majority of Ghanaians, will know that indeed the NPP has done something monumental. That has to be given another chance. And they are making a fundamental mistake as though the NDC will be facing Nana Kufado in 20, 2014, uh, 2024. I don't know where they are coming from. That Danado is not going to win. No, Danado is exiting the scene. He has only two years to exit. And there will be a first candidate to contest uh, uh, former President John Mahama. And that is why that first candidate, Ghanaians will ask former President John Mahama, what have you left at the flag that you want to go back and pick it? Or what policies were left that you want to implement? That you want you, the Ghanaians, to entrust the destiny of this country into your hands. Remember, when the Graduate Unemployed Association called on him to offer them employment, what did he say? He said he was not a magician. Has he now become a magician to be able to turn around things? These are the 20 questions, the simple, simple questions that the Ghanaian who does not forget. You understand? The former president is Ghanaian forget, but the Ghanaian does not forget the things that were said in the past. So, Sarah, it is much ado about nothing. It is equalization. It suits them. They will not be able to tell you that going to the IMF is not good, yet they are criticizing the president for going to the IMF. It's all about what was said yesterday. So let us also equalize and then make it as, look as though we are all doing the same. When the NPP has shown through policies and programs that it is comparable to now when it comes to the policies of the country. I'll end it here. Thank you. Uh, let me do a couple of messages on YouTube. There's um, Arif Hassan who is joining us from Liberia. Daniel Ofe, a good morning to you. Good morning to Nana Kusia who says, so now the NDC must be blamed for the MPP going to the IMF. Uh, Ekade Ebra says the expenditure of the government is the sole responsibility of the government and not made in GH goods. The government are for sharing the money among themselves. They tax Ghanaians as if we are fools. Um, there's also Rosemary Maunyo who says a lost president, Nanado, a lost economy under the presidency of nuisance people. Uh, and says, uh, okay, there's Clarenko Bra who says MPP has failed Ghanaian. There's Diamond. Is it Diamond Asari? What is uh, Solomon talking about? Can someone tell him he's... Okay, I hear you. <laughs> Some of this comment. Anyway, uh, Amaza Sampiali is joining us. Uh, he says, Sir, I tell Solomon that their first three years of the success they claim to have shocked all came from the investment of JDM. And that is why they extended the policy. If we have energy security, it's due to John Mahama from the way you are borrowing the economy, will be worse in 2024. There's Bright, who is joining us from Bato. Are you aware that is only Ghana? That sent a congratulatory message to Mr. Ruto of Kenya. And now that Odinga is in court, what will our president say? Should the Kenyan court call for a rerun? What a corrupt president. There's also from Lamte Okain of La Accra, who says, Lord Komen boasted that he will not hand over power to the NDC today or tomorrow. But he suffered from a mild stroke soon after that comment. And that is enough to tell him that our lives are in the hands of God. And he has no power. That's from uh, Okain. There's Idi Gideon, who is also joining us, says a good morning. Uh, Ghanaians must be made to know that we do not go to school to learn common sense, but we go to school to learn trade. And so our common sense endowed us by nature should be used to help us speak out very vigorously to salvage the ravaging economy. It is, n it is to note that instead of solutions, our president is still on campaign trail all over Ghana, blaming everything bad for him. And he surrogates for woes of Ghana. It's my, it, it is mind okay. It is disheartening. Ghanaians are urged to for, are urged to, okay, together to stop the irresponsibility on the part of the government and its communicators almost everywhere in the media landscape. Please take your time and write the message. Uh, so that it will be easier for me to read. Charles Akpalu is also joining us. The President Nana Kufuado has not mentioned a single solution to our national woes, always blaming everything on earth. Even comedian Ukrainian President at war has solutions. I now hold a very strong view for further leadership to be subjected to thorough medical 
mental medical health evaluation. And I should stop insulting our intelligence with his breaking the eighth mantra. Uh, a teacher sent that from Tishi Nungwa. Um, there's also MFASI Kanate with a school fees for SHS was between 500 and 800 cities. And these students were paying 20 cities when the MPP took over power. Parents are now spending more than four times this amount for their children to survive. What is the MPP guy talking about? Uh, Ambassador Edith Hazel said, disgracefully, we still have people that play defense for MPP and Ekufuado. The strategy adopted now is to be shouting on top of their voices without making any tangible sense. Ghana's economy is in deep crisis, but for Akufuado and his cronies, winning 2024 election is their biggest priority. Um, okay, that's coming from, okay, actually, that's coming from Angelo Kojofi Agbe. Uh, so this ambassador, he always says, please, can MPP man explain why President Kufuado decided to call upon Ghanaian citizens to vote according to their living conditions in the year 2020? Uh, then I think he writes it in three, okay. Thank you. Ama, since you have, uh, please come in for me. So we'll move on to Ami. I read it. That's I read it. <laughs> please, Ama. Good thing. That must be credited to uh, uh, former President Mahama. Yeah. What about the bad things? <laughs> so you must credit that one to you. <laughs> Ama. I, I, I want to um, start off, you know, uh, from where Felix started off. And Felix spoke about the fact that he has never been a fan you know, um, of our current president that he always, you know, um, had seen through him and knew that there wasn't anything there and wondered about the people who sort of um, had hope in him. And I, 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 I think I've done this on the show before, but I'll do it again. I have to say that I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people that, you know, not necessarily because I supported um, the MPP or I supported the, the presidency of Nenei Kufuadu, but I, I just did not expect things to be able to deteriorate, you know, um, as far as it has under the presidency of Nenei Adudamwe Kufuadu. And I say this all the time. I grew up, you know, um, on him. I grew up listening to him. I, 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 I dare say, I, as a little girl, I went on one or two demonstrations that you know, he led and he championed. And I was a fan, honestly, of the man of you know, some perceived principles. And, you know, um, and here I'll use a very famous word that has perhaps been overused in Ghana and has lost its relevance, integrity. You know. So I am one of those people that are absolutely shocked at the turn of events presently, because I never, 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 never. It, 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 listen, it goes beyond mismanagement, and I'll speak about mismanagement in a bit. But but this goes beyond mismanagement. It goes beyond responsibility. It comes to accountability. Now, how do you, as any, um, <clears throat> where's fail me this morning? As as an upholder of the constitution of this country, as somebody, as somebody who is supposed to believe in the Ghanaian and in, in state, in Ghana, in upholding, you know, um, not just even with the constitution, not just the letter of the constitution, but even the spirit of the constitution, to oversee the state run down in every aspect to this level, it's, it's shocking. It's, it's, it's completely unbelievable that these things are happening today under Nana. I, I can't believe it. Let, let, let's, let's look at what he says. He says that the problem, I mean, this situation of going to the IMF can, shouldn't be blamed on him or his government. And I'll use his example. He says it's way beyond, that it's way beyond, you know. And at the very basic level, the very obvious question then becomes, who should we blame? Who? Who has our mandate? Who did we vote for? Who presently in Ghana has any power or any ability to do anything besides the government? Who? 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 Seriously, who? I, I, and I wrote that question, like, and I put serious question marks around it. Like, who 
does our president expect us to blame for our present economic circumstance? Who? Shocking. Shocking. Completely shocking. Unbelievably shocking. Unbelievably shocking. Jesus is way beyond him. And then, you know, I can look back to instances where he's done the biblical thing, the, the biblical references, you know, let's pray to God, let's, you know, then he shouldn't be president. Then we should have voted for um, Bishop Takiya Boy, right? Right? Or perhaps Archbishop Duncan Williams. You know, somebody who is closer to God, somebody who is identifiably closer to God, you know, um, to, to solve the problem. So it is just shocking for me, I, it, ridiculous, you know, that as president of a nation, if things are going terribly wrong, you don't come out, and I say this, chest out, own it, own it, own it. You know, don't do the blame game. Just own it and tell us in all seriousness and earnestness your appreciation of the situation, your intention to solve it, and give us concrete ways in which you intend to get us out of the situation. Just come out and say that, you know, don't blame me, don't blame my government. And then to make it worse, I say, blame my predecessor. Goodness, really. Are we here again? Is campaign not over? Have we not use this to win the election already are, are we not have we not passed that stage um shocking so a few things first um you know um solo says let's also blame the ndc right but then he says specifically that let's also blame parliament i'm sorry honorable but i have to side with solomon um, on this one B because for me the essence of, and I, and I realize that Honorable just, you know, yeah, Honorable, I'm sorry. The, the, the essence of having three arms of government is for checks and balances. The executive has lost it, obviously. What's the legislator doing? So on this one, I, I am inclined to what siding with Solomon just a little bit. <laughs> because we do have a parliament in this country. We do have a legislator in this country. Now, if the executive has completely lost it, which obviously the executive has lost it, I mean, come on. What's Parliament doing? And thanks be to God, let's all go the God way. Thanks be to God, we have a split Parliament. You know, it, it can't be business as usual. So, so now our Parliament has some teeth and can bite. So just to throw it out there, that yes, Parliament has to wake up. Has to wake up and collect our money for us. Seriously. Because right now, you know, so, so just, to, just, just to make that point, that yes, the executive has failed, but the other organs of state, there's a legislature, there's a judiciary. What are they doing? What, 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 what are we doing? Okay, so let's come to mismanagement. Were we not in Ghana, perhaps anybody feel free to correct me, two years or three years into the administration of Ekufuado, when we were told that we had been taken out of our, all of our economic rules, when the vice president was described as an economic messiah. Did that not happen in Ghana? Didn't that happen? When two years or three years into the administration of this, this government, our vice president was said to have been the economic messiah that has, you know, taken us out of our economic rules with, 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 with the, um, our present finance minister being... Forgive me, the words don't come readily. All the, the, the words, the synonyms, the acronyms, the idioms that were used to describe, you know, the economic team. It's just not the same Ghana. Like two, three years into the administration of the same government. Then further down when things are going wrong, suddenly it's somebody else's fault. I mean, you solved it as an economic messiah. Yes, there was rust within the NDC. Yes, the NDC ran us down completely. Yes, the NDC is the worst thing that have happened in the world ever. But you solved it, right? Two, three years into your administration, you did it, didn't you, Solomon? Did. You did. Yes. So why is it that suddenly we should go back and blame the, after you've done it? I, I, I don't understand. Okay, let's let's move ahead. We, we we are saying Ukraine COVID now. Um, Solomon is talking about Russia cutting its gas supply to Europe. Are we Europe? How, how are we directly affected by the, by, by the cuts in supply of gas to Europe? We buy a lot from Europe. So if you cut supply to them, 
Even do, oh come on, Solomon. Even those who are directly affected <laughs> by activities in Russia and Ukraine are not crying as much as we are. Even they who are directly whose whose economy is directly linked and directly tied to the activities of Europe, you know, um, Ukraine and Russia. Even they are looking for solutions to their problems. They are not lifting up their hands and you know and, and crying that they because you can't solve the problems for you. Which comes to my next issue. The whole time Solomon was speaking, I had my pen up because I was waiting to write one thing that Solomon was going to say. The government is doing it. He kept saying the government is doing its best. The government is doing great. I gave you how. I told you about, about the industrial transformation. One district, one factory. Today, oh, you are yes. talking about one district, one we factory. Today, today. We, yes, we, it is. A, all the 125. Where are the factories? Oh, you are in parliament. Tell me, can you tell me one thing they have produced that you can exhibit? I, I, I drink today. Equidus. I, I drink echo juice. We've been drinking echo juice since five years ago. Nasha no? rice. I eat nasha rice. You are fucking living on the bed. Solomon, 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 Please. Listen, it's a miracle. Listen, <laughs> let's, let's, honorable, let's even grant that the fact is fake. Exists. Honorable, let's grant oh. that. No, 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 no. Let's go along with Solomon. So the problem, so let's is all fake. live in this imaginary so world in which Solomon <laughs> exists. Let's do that with you, Solomon. Let's, 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 let's enter into Solomon's world <laughs> with him. Let's go there with him. Let's agree with Solomon that there are some wonderful factories somewhere. How have those factories affected our bottom line? All the wonderful factories that the MPP has built. Great, Solomon. Uh, just what have they done for our economy? A journey of a time How have those factories... Uh, a journey of a time uh, begins with a step. Oh. We have taken the first step. It will expand. That's how all big countries we start. Them. Nations, they start, they start with these small, small so, factories. And then expand. So it's not about, about, step. It's not about taking a step. Did you take well, a step? Take a step backwards. Well, well, you, you never took any step. But you are not It's better to start. You never took any step during your step. We will come to it. So my point is... I think Amma is addressing the question. My point basically is that up until now, up until now, forget the fact that our president has not even directly addressed us as a, as a nation. You know, every Ghanaian today appreciates the situation. Listen, only Friday, I had three friends call me about increments in school fees. Friday. Three. Three of my friends. And, and this is my circular, you know, I mean, my very small nuclear, um, you know. Uh, the truth is that everything is increasing in this country. Our salaries remain the same. Our salaries remain the same. Everything, everything. Go out and buy something today. Go back tomorrow and attempt to buy it. The prices double. Sometimes double plus half. Yeah. So, so the truth is that our situation is terrible. Now, forget the fact that our president has not directly addressed this issue. Because he hasn't. He hasn't directly addressed this. He's, he's going around campaign as usual, talking about breaking the AIDS, even in these times, and using those... Um, party platforms and opportunities to sort of uh, throw inventives and you know a shade and, and and he hasn't directly ad ad addressed the issue which for me is very problematic now in doing all of these small 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 party politicking you know and insisting on breaking this aid he still hasn't told us how we are coming out of this situation he still hasn't told us he still hasn't offered us any concrete even a plan, just a plan, for us to even question the how, just a plan. So, so, so you ask yourself, you know, you ask yourself if the president is um, away. You know, it, anyway, so, 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 so that's my major thing. Now, for me, this insistence, let's, let's go back to Mahama for just a little bit. Um, we speak about COVID, we speak about the Ukraine war, but, but let's stay on COVID and let's talk about the impact COVID has had on us as a country. And for a minute, I think that it's important that all of us appreciate President John Mahama 
and I've never done this before. Anywhere, I've never mentioned his name and commended him anywhere be before for very personal reasons. But today, I feel compelled to do it. It is important for us as Ghanaians to appreciate President John Mahama and some of the policies and some of the plans and some of the infrastructure that he put down for us. And I'll speak to a personal example. My uncle had a, 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 a situation um, very recently, well, a few months ago. And I tell you, Sena, every hospital that he was trans moved to, transferred to, from this hospital to that hospital to that, in that chain, every single one of them was constructed under John Dramani Mahama. Every one of them. Let's talk about the impact of that on COVID. Now, during COVID, I went to the Volta region to speak to the, 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 the regional minister and then the deputy responsible for the health care of the region, I've forgotten his name, and both of them spoke about <coughs> hospitals and the impact of that infrastructure on, 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 on how we've been able to sort of cushion ourselves in the COVID situation. Now, that we can give to John Mahama, right? Now, let's talk about what the, this government is doing about COVID. The government that actually is, has lived or has governed during COVID and infrastructure. What are, what are, what are, what's the MPP doing? It's agenda building a cathedral. One, one, one. The agenda MPP is building a cathedral. Agenda one, one, one. Was... Sena, the MPP oh, is building... Yes. Sorry, yes. The MPP is building a cathedral today. Today is insisting on continuing to build a cathedral in a country with the worst performing currency. Shocking. Even today, the MPP insists on building a cathedral. Let's talk about this total lack of accountability. Total lack of accountability. Now, I say this all the time. There's responsibility, there's accountability. What accountability does for us as a country is that it tells you that the government that you voted for has you at heart, is present, is aware, appreciates the situation, and is going to do something about it. There's a total, 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 cynical attitude, you know, um, of this government to what is happening. Let's talk about how governments handle the labor issue. And I want to go here because it's very important to me in, in, in talking about mismanagement, you know. Um, Labor comes out and says, give us 20% uh, cola, right? Give us 20% cola because inflation is today at 32%. Then it was around 29%, if, if I'm correct. Inflation was around 29% the time at which the TUC was demanding for 20% cola. Now, all other civil society organizations backed the TUC's call for that 20% of cola because, truthfully, in all honesty, we were all feeling it. Petrol, name it, gas, everything. Now, what did governments do? Governments started meeting labor every now and then in a series of meetings that involved the, the, the finance minister, that involved, you know, um, employment, minister. employment minister every now and then. Now, the most shocking one for me, because we were there, Pan African TV, we actually stationed ourselves at the point at which that meeting was going to take place. Governments come into the meeting and say, with a list of, you know, um, labor organizations. And it says, this one, this one, this one, we'll meet you. That one, that one, that one. Get out of the room because you have embarked on a strike. And so we are not going to meet you. And immediately, I'm shocked at the, first of all, the complete lack of intelligence. Right? And I'm using intelligence because I'm using um, intelligence in terms of security, intelligence in terms of emotional intelligence, Intelligence simply because of how to govern. Intelligence in terms of leadership. Who does that? So you call them. First of all, you invited these organizations to come for a meeting. So you knew those that are on strike, those that are not on strike. Yes, you decided to call all of them with the intention of shaming them once they get to the meeting. But now that they come to the meeting, you say, you get out, you stay, you don't stay, you go, all of that. With the intention to do what? How did government think that that was going to play out? What? Divide and rule again? The government intended to what? So the ones that were, going to, were supposed to stay within the meeting and, and negotiate with them were supposed to feel like some favorite children, like some pets of government, so that the ones that were asked to leave would feel, so, so, so that what? You, I, it's just mismanagement on all fronts. The lack of taxes, the, 
just mismanagement. So not only are you directly mismanaging the economy, let's why even what government is doing with the media. The, the, there's, there's a congress for, for, for the ruling party, MPP. You are giving out accreditation to uh, media houses to, 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 to come and cover it. As a TV station, for African TV, we want to come and set up, you know, and cover this. Then, no less a person, but the director of communications of the MPP, apparently one of the directors, because how deputies. many do you have? One of the deputies. Yeah. Well, they, they made him, yeah. you know, uh -huh. um, that he says to a TV station like Pan African TV, a TV station like Pan African TV, that we will not give you accreditation. Go home, drink cocoa, and watch on TV. And you wonder. You, you, you just sit back and went, for me, I don't care. When we came back, everybody was me. I was like, why do you disturb? Let's play music. Let's play reggae. Let's play reggae and enjoy. I mean, why are you bothered? If they don't want you there, it's an opportunity that's been given, you know, um, <laughs> to them. So if they don't want the opportunity, and, and I had this I've had this conversation with several, you know, um, uh, MPP leadership. The point for me is that this government, not just in terms of the economy, in terms of handling, basic handling, negotiating, dealing with key stakeholders of government, like media, like labor, like the security forces, like the judiciary, has failed in every sector. The government simply seems to be clueless, doesn't know how to deal with the media, doesn't know how to deal with TUC, doesn't know what to do with our economy, doesn't, nothing. And to top it up, the icing on that cake then becomes a complete lack of accountability. Let me end simply by telling every Ghanaian, because this is what I tell myself every morning. The reason why we go and vote, right, is not for the people we vote for. It's for ourselves. We vote for ourselves. We vote because we want to see improvements in our living conditions. We are not voting for anybody. We are voting for ourselves. I want Ghanaians to remember that because I'm afraid that because of the way things have been mismanaged, the, the, the voter apathy might become a thing. You know, this very annoying thing of they are all the same. The NDC did, the NPP did it. You know, th that kind of um, posturing which tends to sort of, you know, make the average Ghanaian thing, well, then what's the point? I, I, I want us to be reminded that there's a point. There's a big point, you know, to still having faith in governance. There's a big point to still believing in a responsible government. There's a big point to queuing and voting. And it's important that as the MPP insists on breaking the aid, we tell them how we feel about their governance. It's, it's so crucial to me. Let's not lift up our hands and say that, oh, you know, forget it. You know, this is, this is government. This is what politicians, this is how they are. No. Let's still keep faith. Let's still keep faith. For me, it's important that we still, you know, and, and I love what labor is doing. I love it. What good, I love it. It's important that we still, no matter how bad it is, the truth is that this government is clueless. The truth is that this government has mismanaged. The, that's the truth. The truth is that presently, Ghana is not doing well. That's the truth. But let's not give up. Let's still engage. Let's still do the striking. Let's still speak up. Let's still let our voices be heard. Let's still do everything that is necessary as citizens and not spectators. But ultimately, let's be reminded that we have the ultimate power, right? And let's queue again. Very important. Let's all go queue and vote again. Exercise that mandate, that very crucial mandate that will benefit us. That's how I want to end my submission. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Amma says, vote. Vote for you. You vote for your own welfare, not for the politician. You're not helping them. You're supposed to help you. Uh, a few messages on YouTube again, because I usually don't go there. So let me acknowledge that those of you watching us on YouTube, these are messages you're sending to us. Uh, Roland Adiko says, good morning, boss. I feel sad for this MPP man, because sometimes the way they talk on issues about Ghana and blame COVID-19 and Russia and Ukraine war in, in Ghana. That he lives it there. Kofi Kwaten, what is wrong with this MPP man? He, okay. <laughs> His name is Solomon. Uh, he said you are he said he was asking <laughs> He said is is the room devoid of AC? 
<laughs> Why is he sweating like a pregnant fish? Yes, I think you have to raise the electrical condition yeah. for Solo. Uh, Stephen, Stephen Kobler says, God save us from MPP tactical politics. Everything there is an excuse for uh, mismanagement. Rosemary Aunyo, Senator, please. So much should we talk about enjoying light. Our lives are going off and on in the Volta region. Sell the glass, Senator. Please, get... Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so a lot of messages are coming in. Let me jump to Alaji. When I come back, I'll read a few more of those messages. I, you know how it works. So go ahead, go ahead and come back. Alaji. Yeah, first and foremost, let me use this uh, very exalted platform to say uh, uh, now things now. Uh, uh, yeah. Good morning to uh, my sister Ama. Now, uh, my daughter Ama, let me say so. Then. Uh, Comrade, he says he's not a comrade. It's, it's, a, it's a new patriot. <laughs> I wonder where the old patriots are. <laughs> Solo, uh, Sana, your good self. Uh, Sana, I've been off the program for the for, for the past, I think, almost two months. Um, the last two weeks has not been very good for us. We've lost a number of people uh, in my constituency, in my region, my own personal assistant who handled most of my political programs. He just died suddenly in the last two weeks. Oh, so right. it was a, a trauma for me. Uh, I don't remember the last time I wept, but I wept. And uh, uh, we, just when we had finished that tour and we were in the process, we lost our regional chairman. Um, we had done some very good conscientious work for us to make some progress. And then we lost a prominent chief again. Uh, the Myanmar, Lana. we've lost so many other people even within this space of two weeks, and uh, it's, it's, it's been very difficult for our people. I, as a Muslim, uh, we say Kalu inna lillahi wa inna lillahi rajiun. From from Almighty Allah did we come, and from whom shall we return? So, as a Muslim, we attribute it to the work of Allah Almighty. The only thing we can do now is to say and pray for their souls, for Allah to unleash His infinite mercy. Uh, on them and uh, pardon them and give them generative freedoms, give them eternal rest in his bosom. That is our prayer for all of them. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to also salute the Burkina people of the South Narrow Constituency for the successful uh, uh, branch elections. Fantastic. In fact, in some of them, it was like a general election. People voted from morning to about 4 p.m. in certain areas. NDC people. The party is so energized now. I can tell you that we are ready for the kill. Uh, it shows how rejuvenated uh, uh, some places in our constituencies, especially in the run-up to the branch elections that we have. And I'm very proud that uh, Sanargu is once again uh, set up to be the World Bank of the NDC in, in the Northern region. Let me again um, say a good morning to all your viewers. Sana, uh, you see, when you decorate a donkey with all the gold ornaments, and the time comes for it to perform, it will be exposed for the ass that it is. Sana, it is the same donkey. It is comparison that disgraces the donkey. When the donkey is solo, stay by itself, running alone, we say it's the fastest animal. Let the horse join the race. You smoke the dust of the horse and be exposed for the ass that it is. Allah Almighty never makes a mistake. If President Nana Kufadu hadn't become president, I tell you that the word would have gone around that this is the greatest man ever who would have transformed Ghana's fortunes from difficulties into a paradise. If he had never become president, But Almighty Allah has a way of doing things. See, that's why I say, Sena, you don't realize the importance of your buttocks as far as sitting is concerned until there's a boil on it. When you come and there's a chair, you just sit. But wait until you get a boil in the middle. You calculate before you sit. And you realize the importance of your buttocks. When President Mama was doing all these great works, 
the propaganda outright lies deceit peddled by Nana Kufado and his co-conspirator in the lying uh, ambience, Dr. Mahmoud Baunya. Sold a lot of falsehood to Ghanaians. Painted a picture of heaven. They would take Ghana to the land of milk and honey. And that it was because of incompetence that President Mama and the NDC were not delivering. And in fact, they would deliver it. And that they would deliver to the astonishment of Ghanaians in 18 months. You remember the 18 month mantra here he put? He said, in 18 months, you will dramatically transform the fortunes of this country. So, Sana, see, when you send your son to the hereafter, you return, but you will not recognize him. All the things the MPP said against President Mahama and the NDC in the run-up to the 26th year, they have performed 10 times worse. And so now, I'm happy that Felix started the trajectory. You see, where was the economy before Nana Kufado took over? Take every bit of macroeconomic data from government revenue, expenditure, inflation, foreign exchange, debt, deficit. Take every one of them and do a casual comparison. Indeed, Felix, Felix gives some of them. Some of them. And uh, 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 if you look at uh, inflation, these are things that measure positive uh, 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 cost of living for the people and ultimately the standard of the quality of life of the people. If you read the preface to the 2016 manifesto of the MPP, Nana Kufado said that he had gone around the country, he had seen difficulties and others. And that if the good people of this country, by, by, by destiny, uh, entrust the destiny of the country into his hands, he was going to operate an austere, exemplary, selfless government. Okay? And our people say, you see, if you engage in a matra makwe government, you get ma manya the, uh, uh, the disastrous government. Because when he came out in the distance that we should try him, try me and see, that is the result we are having today. In that manifesto when he spoke, that he was going to exhibit a very austere, selfless government before. This is the worst, the most expansive government in the history of the world. I'm not talking of Ghana. Can you show me a country in which the government is constituted of 127 ministers? Contrary to what he himself said in his manifesto of 2016, to hoodwink the good people of this country to vote for him. He comes, and the first thing, even before he has done anything for the good people of this country, he inflicts us with an atrocious government. Atrocious level of appointment of his family, friends, and other people in government. 127 ministers. Which country? Solomon, can you show me which country we have 100 ministers in government? Ministers. You have 120 what? <laughs> you go on. Tell me how many you have. You go on. No. You say you don't have 127. You have 124. Tell me. 124 and 127. Where, where in the world do you have 100 ministers in government? Tell me. Anywhere on the surface of this earth, from Kosomoskaya to Nauru and Tuvalu. Show me. This is a president relying on the task of Ghanaians who came to say this. And in spite of that, that 127 member government, what is the output of that government? Senator, today, like we say, inflation that inherited 17, 18%. Okay? When President Mama was leaving office on 7th January 2017, the total indebtedness of Ghana from independence to that day was 120 billion. Ghana cities. There was a, 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 a the, 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 the deficit was no more than 6%. At that time, that has been even mentioned by Felix. Okay? Take every indice that, 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 that you can talk about. The exchange rate at that time, 
people are even that even in certain instances it was 3.8, but just round it up, four CDs. Just round it up to four CDs to a dollar. At that time, a gallon of petrol, a gallon of petrol, listen to me well, a gallon of petrol was 14 CDs. A gallon, I didn't say a liter. A gallon of petrol, 14 CDs. A gallon of petrol was 14 CDs. Today, fast forward. What economy have they learned? Take every macroeconomic indicator. When Nana Kufado said, Yetisika Bebrisu, you should come there. A lie. I'm sure you have heard me say that. Yetisika Sikasu, you should come there. We have never heard. Okay, I'm telling you that they have said it. Go, go, go back and rehearse your MPP. Uh, 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 no, I will not. I will not attempt to wake you up because really? somebody who is not asleep, somebody who is, who is not asleep, should not be waking up. I won't attempt to wake you up. Even if I put you on your legs, you buckle and go down. So they, they indicated a mantra of Ghana beyond it, of Yetisika Bebresu to come there. They Yetisika Bebresu to come here. Many Ghanaian families cannot even get one meal to eat today. Sena, today go and take every macroeconomic indicator. Inflation. We have an official inflation rate of 32%. I can tell you, like Professor Hanke and others who have done it, they say it's over 60%. And our mothers go to the market. Sometimes you go and buy the thing. On your way back, if you forget to buy something and go back, the price increases. Worse than what Germany experienced after World War II, when we had hyperinflation. We're having hyperinflation on our hands today. Everything has gone up except somebody's height. Everything is up. My brother, that measures the rate at which prices of goods and services go up. And that has a direct impact on the standard of living of the people. Today, the dollar, which was four cities, and the president Mama and Nana Kufado on campaign trade cried to Ghanaians that it is the incompetence of President Mama that has sent the dollar to four cities. So now when I was coming to the studio, I listened to some news portals and they were telling me today the dollar is 11 cities. 11 cities to the dollar. The, the, to the, uh, 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 the cities, 11, 11 cities to the dollar. Today, as we speak. From where? You are asking me. Ah, you are telling where us. do you get the money from? You don't get the money at the bank, the artificial bank raised the, the, the Even bank you yourself, raised. when you are traveling and you go, they won't give you that money. You don't even get it. You go to the forest bureau. From here, pass the forest bureau and ask about the dollar. From here, go, go and ask. Oh, but... I'm sure otherwise you will get the wrath of the Guta people. Make sure that when you are going there, don't let the Guta people identify you as an MPP. Otherwise, they will give you more justice. Okay? Today, under their watch, Dr. Baumia, who had said that he had imprisoned the, 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 the dollar and given the keys to the IGP. Today, look at where the dollar is. And he, and he himself, Soro himself, said it here, that we are almost operating an import driven economy. I like. So if you are doing an import economy and the dollar is 11 cities, what does it tell you about the lives of Ghanaians? Joke. No wonder. All the rating institutions have downgraded the country's economic state to junk. And said that you know what junk is, rubbish. When you are junk, you are rubbish. I'm not a shanty man, forgive me, if I'm not pronounced it very well. Uh -huh. Rubbish. Ah, I'm the one, I said all the fit, uh, Fitch, Moody's, Standards and Poor. Junk. Ghana said it's not junk. But I will leave it to the details. I am this. just asking you, is uh, it not junk? Am I the one who downgraded, downgraded Garnet junk? CC manos with uh, uh, CCCC with negative outlook. Not even after C. C, which is the last. Then they also make you negative outlook. You, 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 are, you, are, you are just waiting to be buried. Never in the annals of our country's history have we been so humiliated and downgraded that like we have under Nana Kufado and Dr. Bamunya today. People who trumpeted their false claims to, to, to having the men. And I'm happy that some people in the MPP have already taken up that fight. That you say you have the men, where are the men? 
Even when they say do the shuffle, they say oh, the shuffle is coming from the NDC people. The shuffle and the president of a republic tells us that he is satisfied with his men. And what is the output of the men? To send our country to junk status, economy. You are satisfied with that output. You are satisfied with people who have run our economy to the ground and reduced the, the lives of the country to excruciating poverty and misery. A president is satisfied. So that tells you the kind of president we have selected. This is the most disastrous government and presidency in the history of our country. It's a real disaster. And if Nadmo were minded to go and put off disasters, the presidency is waiting for them. It's a disaster. As we speak today. And in the face, look, why do we elect people? Why do we elect? Uh, otherwise, Ghanaians, we should stop even, even electing people. Because you elect people to take responsibility for the situation and fix it. Why? Is it not in Nana Kufado? Who told pre President Mills that if the economy is broke, he should fix it? You remember? I remember. What was he telling him to do? Fix it. Uh, yeah, fix it. And to take responsibility. Yes. Is he taking responsibility? Okay. It is only a responsible leader okay. who takes responsibility. An irresponsible leader passes the back like he's doing. He's running away from responsibility. No wonder. Of course, we know he's been sleeping, not only sleeping, but sleeping on the job. So if he's sleeping on the job and now uh, 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 they are trying to wake him from the slumber to take responsibility, he's dazed. This government is completely dazed. They have no clue as to how to fix the economy. And, and this one, I'm not the one saying it. Honorable Kennedy Ajapon, my very good friend in parliament. He says so. Uh, you, have, you have not listened to me on the campaign. He says, President Nana Kufado, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, uh, 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 Alain Chabant, he mentioned all those other people in the economic management team who he described as a disaster. And that having taken us, having mismanaged the economy and taken us to IMF, none of those faces should Ghanaians trust to take out, uh, out of the woods. This is Onabu Kenere Japan. I'm not, I'm, it's an MPP man. It's not an NDC man. And says that he needs fresh faces like them. And no longer this same discredited, uh, uh, lying people who, 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 who ride on the backs of suffering Ghanaians to power and, for, and conveniently forget them. And, and Senna, in the face of these uh, 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 difficulties, look at the actions of government. I just told you this Mbolo <coughs> government that his, 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 his Nana Kufado has inflicted on Ghanaians with extravagance. And the uh, extravagance is so vulgar, vulgar opulence, that today the president can even designate a VA to be carrying a chair anywhere he goes. Have you ever seen anything like that in any part of the world? That when the president president is going somewhere, a, a, a VA to be carrying chair for him. Can you see this insult, this gross disrespect for, for our resources? That he allocates a VA to carry a chair for him to sit. Anywhere he goes, the, the people in that area, there's no... This is the president who sat in Trotter and was drinking Kalipo. Kalipo, Kalipo. The president has... The, the, and, the, eating, the, the, and eating coffee broke, man. Today, listen, if you, the, the V8 has to be cutting his chair. What is the V8 number? There is a V8 Please. for a chair. How do they move the chair? Uh, we so, all see the chair the way. So, 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 that, so, so, I appreciate uh, your difficult situation. Don't worry. What is this? I will no, not believe it. I will not ask you to. Okay, okay, I will stop. I'm saying the Ghanaians are. Look, Ghanaians are. Look, so Ghanaians are my living with them. You see the V8. They see that. They see the chair being removed from V8 anytime when where the president is going. From the boot? Yes, it's clear. So well, how would you dedicate the whole V8? V8! That is the answer. You go to, but, but when you finish here, go, go to the uh, Jubilee House and ask the president. Every, every V8 has a boot. Okay. Oh. This is the vulgar openings they, they, they are inflicting over instead of expenditure. This is the president, in spite of all the decent, even in parliament, on the floor of parliament, when we have raised his vulgar, uh, 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 insensitive expenditure, where you go and hire. A, pre a presidential private jet for $28,000 an hour. Okay? Countless times. 
And when the thing became unbearable for him, he decided to dodge and say, oh, you are taking private uh, 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 commercial uh, flight. And then only to ask the jet to go and wait for him in the UK. So that when he came, people will not cry uh, eyes of Ghanaians will not see him. Then he will jump into it and go and attend what? Church service. He went to attend T.D. Jakes, T.D. Jakes Church in, in, in South Carolina. You see how, you see how he saw Ghanaians that in terms of difficulties where leaders must exemplify, must lead by example and show sacrifice. You are, there's no food in your house. You say your children, you soak gari and granules for them to eat. And you come with turkey and fried rice and other things to be eaten in their face. Are you worthy of being called a father, a leader? This is the this is the president and the government that we have today. Okay. Go and look at the way they blew COVID nineteen thirty billion COVID nineteen uh, 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 monies, yeah, including from nineteen. Nine, sorry, nineteen billion. Sorry, nineteen billion COVID nineteen monies. In fact, the figures vary. Because the president gives a different figure, the finance minister gives a no, different figure. Uh, uh, 19, 17, 18, this man 18, says 17.7, 17, 17, 17, 19 billion. billion of what he accounted for in parliament. That's what he said. They spent actually 18.18. But he's he the, 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 the total, total of 33 billion. Why are they running no, from I'm saying that the total uh, amount was 19 billion. But your, your leader talks about 33 billion. Which one? Ah. Probably I, I am just indicating to you. Maybe they are talking of the other money. When the finance minister, so now you are running away from your own. No, no, away from it. I told you that when the finance minister came, we even told you that that is not the full uh, uh, disclosure because the trust fund that was contributed yielded billions of Ghana cities. It, it was never added. It's 63 it's, it's million Ghana it, it was not added. It was not added. World Bank and I, uh, 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 IMF mm. gave certain monies in dollars. Those were not added. But they added so, so we are, are indicating to you that that was not a full disclosure the finance minister made. Oh. He didn't make a full disclosure. So my brother, but I'm just limiting it to the nine. He himself accepted the 19.3 million, 19.3 billion. Look at how they have brazenly raided that COVID, COVID, COVID fund, and in a very criminal, criminal manner, dissipated the money, including the the woman who contested me in my constituency in 2020. No wonder, uh, uh, Sena, MPP shared money Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And the Monday that we're voting, they were still sharing money in my constituency. They made money available to the candidate, and it's now clear that it was she was not there because she said that uh, she got a quota as a candidate and also got a, a quota as a second vice chairperson in the region. So it means in all the from the constituency, and that every constituency was giving 200,000 Ghana cities. So you see how they, they, they preferred our money and shared the monies among themselves. In a nearly criminal manner, as it is. <clears throat> in the face of these difficulties Ghanaians are facing, you see how they are treating their resources. That's why I've always said that you see, if you make the hyena the caretaker of your craft, don't expect to come and find one animal alive. You will chop all of them. You see, and 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 and, and, and Sana, look at uh, 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 the issue of our exchange rate today. That I'm sure maybe if we have time, we'll come to this uh, uh, thing that Guta was talking about. See, because Sena, Al Almighty Allah is a God of justice. He never inflicts injustice on any. And so when sometimes people say that, look, they will leave it to God. Don't think that they have run away from the problem. Allah Almighty will answer for them. What is happening to Nana Kufado today? Go back and look at it. You see that even when they did the decision, they, they took present Mama on. When uh, the Fitch, uh, it was it Fitch or Moody's, one of them uh, downgraded Ghana from B+. Plus. To be manos. That was even be manos. They celebrated. And why Ghanaians are angry today is because ah, it was the same government of Nana Kufado who told us that everything about the IMF was evil. And you are where, Solo? To the point that when when they took us out of the IMF, they 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 they, they celebrated a Kenke party, Kenke and Waje party at the finance ministry. Ah <laughs> Kenke party. Who did that? At the finance minister came for that. So you cannot eat cake. I said, I said that they did a cake party. So too. when you eat cake, gay is party. Oh, uh, me myself, nobody eats cake more than me. So have you been partying because we are in our No, they said that they organized a cake party to celebrate the exit from the IMF. Oh, how? Yes, that's what happened at the finance ministry. You know it. 
Okay, so who are they sucking in the evening and is greeting good night? The IMF, you say you are running away. You are celebrating for, for exiting the IMF. And now you are the same person taking us back. God of mercy. What kind of people are these? What kind of people are these? So, Sana, yeah, the, the time is not up. I've just started. Oh. Hey, Araji. Araji, you know what this is? I buy to what you have said. <laughs> How can you, you see? that? If the, uh... <laughs> so, I, 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 clearly. <laughs> And, 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 and if you see the, when I'm talking about reaction of government, if you see the greedy manner, I have never seen a greedy and wicked government like this. And I'm going to emphasize, I'm going to expatiate. As Ghana grows poorer, the president and his hand people, especially the institutions and others they own, they grow richer. Look at this book running and the issue of conflict of interest that has been made against the finance minister. Can you forget that? When you ask him, you say, oh, he left data bank. But that what has come out that he only has shares in, in data bank. What an insult. You have, you, have, you have left data bank, but you have shares in data bank. What does that mean? Is your shares not even more important than you leaving data bank? Even if you are even data bank self and you don't have shares, you prefer that one. For every dollar that we go to borrow, data bank and other things had a, 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 a percentage of the share. So one of the reasons for the reckless and irresponsible, irresponsible borrowing that the government did under the ages of Ken Oforata was that any time they borrowed, his, 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 his bank would make money. Okay? Any time they borrowed, his enterprise insurance would make money. Any time they borrowed, African Legal Associations of Gabi or Chidango, they all benefit. So it was in their interest to continue on the borrowing spree. Reckless, irresponsible, unmindful borrowing. And so from a debt of 120 billion, when President Mama was exiting office, today they have sent us to 430 billion Ghana cities. In a span of just five and a half years. Sana. So as Ghana is inundated in debt, can you for that? And his data bank and his shares, his healthy shares in data bank because he's the owner of the whether he likes it or not, Ghanaians going to be the owner of the data bank. So, when Ghanaians are languishing in poverty, they are languishing in fabulous astronomical wealth. So, they are using, and that's why we call the state capture. Remember, you recall we did a state capture press conference to highlight how they have captured the state to use it as a beacon for milking it and making money so that to store for themselves and generations. Of their relatives and friends. Okay? Senna, that is the unmindful nature of this government, the selfish, wicked nature of this government. That they can allow is a, a clear issue of conflict of interest. So you are the finance minister. You are going to engage in financial transactions, and your company is the one that gets it. How come that at the time when Kenu Farata was not finance minister, Data Bank could not get that job? In fact, Data Bank was one of the distressed banks waiting to be liquidated. And all of a sudden, it is, it is one of the biggest beneficiaries. And this one, you see, we should not talk. <laughs> Clear cut! This is how <laughs> governance has been so, de de has so degenerated. And then Nana Kufado and Data Bank, yeah. To the point that it is clearly now the interest of themselves and their cronies and not Ghanaians. So the MPP government, as currently constituted, has no interest in minding the welfare of Ghanaians. No wonder they are going to sleep, allow the dollar to go on its own way, allow inflation to go, allow... They have, allowed, they have abandoned Ghanaians long ago. They are looking for how to cushion themselves. And so, Sana, why are people surprised that President Kufado says, in spite of all this, Shambolic, unprecedentedly uh, 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 disastrous performance. You will be talking about breaking the eight. It is not that he himself, he himself doesn't believe he can break the eight. He doesn't believe what he says himself. But he seems to be relying on, uh, our people say that when you see a, f a frog on top of a tree, it is his helper which is near. 
Somebody has helped the frog onto the top, on top of the tree. The frog itself doesn't climb trees. Okay? He is indicating clearly that they will do whatever it takes. And, and you and you, me, me and you know whatever it takes. In their parlance, even including collusion with their people at the electoral commission to rig the election. And so, when Dr. Baumia starts and says that he prefers the Ghana card to 1,000 interchanges, they know what they want to do with the Ghana card. <coughs> Already, you are hearing that the Ghana card will become the single, the sole basis for anybody who wants to feature in the voter, in the register of voters. If you don't have the Ghana card, this is an ally that was approved, and in the last election, it was laden with guarantees so that no single Ghanaian can be disenfranchised. The constitution of this republic grants unfettered access to every Ghanaian to have his or her name featured in the voter's register. Nobody has any right to make regulations to prevent any Ghanaian or to disenfranchise one single Ghanaian. You don't have that right. But nobody has denied anybody. You don't have that right. As we speak today, in fact, we invited the Honorable uh, uh, Kenatefa to Parliament to come and brief us about the, the, the issues, <coughs> the, the multitude of issues uh, and problems plaguing the Ghana card issue. And he came, and by his own admission, he told us that there are still millions of Ghanaians who don't have the card. And he himself said that they don't even have offices across the length and breadth of all the districts in this country. And that he had written to the finance minister asking for more resources to open more office, employ more better, but he hadn't gotten the, the resources. So they are incapacitated. And in a subsequent briefing, they have even told us that even basic logistics, such as printing materials and others, they don't have it. And I, you have to wrap up for me. So, Senna, okay. how does the Ghana card, by your own admission, that you cannot make it accessible to all Ghanaians, then become the sole inst uh, 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 instrument for being featured into the voters' register, if you don't have a sinister agenda? You see, it's because of the evil deeds, evil thoughts of the donkey that God denied it horns. <laughs> if the, God, the donkey had horns like a cow, <laughs> to have inflicted maximum damage. <laughs> this is their intentions. Sada, they say that if you don't know death, look at sleep. <laughs> we have seen what happened in 2020. Never in, the, in, the, in our country, in the annals of our country's history, have we seen an electoral commission for one election declare six results. We saw what the Electoral Commission and the Jim Benson and Bosman, they did. And I'm, I'm cautioning not just the NDC, all Ghanaians, that we must wake up and be prepared to fight for what is right. That never again should we allow what happened in 2020 to be attempted again in this country. Okay. Never again. Because the next election <clears throat> should be decided, like President Mama said, at the police station. Nobody should have any intention of going to court. That election should be decided. Every single piece sheet and others must be decided at the police station. And not allow somebody to perpetrate fraud or go and start padding votes, create another auxiliary uh, uh, coalition center, regional coalition, and in the name of regional coalition, you go and add votes. <laughs> Senna, it's a wake-up call for all of us to stand up and be counted. Every single NDC member, every single patriotic Ghanaian, must stand up and be counted. Okay, I like you. That in the face of this shambolic performance, I like this you, hopelessly uninspiring so performance put up by the Nana Kufuadu Bamiya government, their only uh, solace in this will be that they need to rig the election because no, no sane Ghanaian was going to vote for them in 2024. Thank you very much, I like you. I have to take a break. When you're back from the break, we'll uh, give the panelists a few minutes to talk about the Guta issue. We are back shortly. <laughs> He has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer and... He has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer and... He 
has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer and Thank you very much for staying with us on the matter of talk shows. I like you and I like you. Uh, just a few, just a few messages. This one is from Martin. I, uh, okay, so this is Ezinako Jojo who says, "I think by this time everyone knows the presidency is occupied by mediocre, irresponsible, and insensitive person. Is the worst a person ever to occupy the presidency of this country?" There is also um, Papa Bishi who says he recklessly went on spending expeditions on over 120 ministers using our cash on demolition of over 21 judges' houses, replacing some houses for them again. Demolishing Malian Embassy plus Passport Office, again taking the responsibility of looking for other places for them. Still spending on hard-earned taxpayers' cash on all this, just to pave way for a necessary venture like so-called National Cathedral. Again, signing our cash via his cousin, Ken Foyata, to construct ongoing cathedral. Still not satisfied. Another goes around the world and expensive just flying and bathing in the air, all on hard and taxpayer's cash. Uh, the message goes on and on, but unfortunately, that's all I can read. Alasa Mezuna uh, joins us from Tema East, who says, Akufuado must focus on reviving the dying economy. They would corruption, control the reckless spending of state resources, stop the reckless borrowing, sack the incompetent finance minister, Ken Ofoyata. The hardship on individuals are unbearable. These are excuses of Russia, Ukraine, COVID-19 factors, and the reasons why Ghanaians are suffering. Is untrue. How did you use 24 million cities, to 24 billion to, to collapse banks that need uh, 9 billion cities to correct some administrative lapses? Uh, that's from Alasa Meisuna. Olanyo well, Nakwetia says that Santi Traditional Council must be temporary, uh, temporarily advised to search for due process before something else in this manner to follow. They can report or your PFM and code to the NC or NMC for straight action to be taken rather than on supposed autocratic powers to avert them from operating. He's commenting on something else. Uh, Seidu says the government in its last two years that is still making excuses and not accepting responsibility for challenges has completely lost touch with reality. President Kufuado is not showing candor in leadership, especially sounding partisan at every given opportunity. The economic crisis we find ourselves in is as a result of profligacy, opulent lifestyle, corruption, procurement and total waste in governance. Um, there's also Davi Sena who says, Greetings. I'm not surprised Solomon is doing everything to support the MPP and his leadership and programs. Looks like he and his likes live on cloud nine and not present day Ghana. Time will tell. Uh, that's Davi Sena. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's, that's Davi Sena. Let me end with Habib who says, Good morning. Uh, President Kufuado and Ghanaians shouldn't blame him for going to IMF. We hear today one dollar is ten Ghana cities. Importers and exporters are crying and suffering businesses are collapsing. Price of goods and services keep rising every day. Today, Ghanaians are wallowing in abject poverty to the extent that some people eat once a day. What happened to our PDS monies? And the fifty two billion Ghana cities missing at JCB. Senna, convert fifty two billion into dollars. Do we have to go to IMF? And the president will hear we won't blame you, but we shall blame our grandma the sparrows. Aku for the gross mismanagement and profligate spending of our public purse, which you promised to protect. Let's talk about Guta. I think some of the points they make, Solo, Solomon, you've made some of those points. You also disagree with the Bank of Ghana's use of interest rates to try to control it. No, no, I mean, it doesn't make uh, business. But sense. you have five minutes on that. Yes, yeah, so uh, Guta, I'm very happy Guta has rescinded his decision to lock their shops because, you see, these strategies would have helped in the early 90s, uh, where we didn't have the shopping malls and uh, online, uh, uh, what do you call it, transactions. Today, by the click of the button, someone can order anything. So if you close your shop at uh, Makola or Kaishi, you haven't done anything. You will not have the much needed impact, especially where you have a lot of China malls around. They are already taking our business. And if you decide to close yours as well, then you would have given in to them. I agree that uh, the way and manner the city is depreciating is, 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 is not the best. I mean, everyone knows that it is eroding working capital. And that is how come myself, according the government, do whatever it takes. And it comes back to the issue of our, the structure of our economy. Remember, it keeps recurring. Uh, in 2014, 
a lawyer had to take the whole government to court on this same issue. But if you read our constitution, I mean, Bank of Ghana, sometimes we allow certain institutions to go score free. Bank of Ghana is, to, is supposed to ensure the stability of the currency under our constitution. So if the currency is not stable, and I'm a businessman, you started the year at, say, six cities, and now you are 10 cities, how do I finance that four cities? And so sometimes the laws or the, our judges must take cognizance of these facts. When the lawyer went to court in 2014 under the able leadership of John Muhammad, that my brother has been praising this morning, the, 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 the judges ruled otherwise. Either than that, I'm sure now the Bank of Ghana will be sitting properly. You understand? Again, you go and increase policy rate. Already, we are trying to address the issue of unemployment. If you increase policy rate, what it means is that banks will have to increase their interest rates. How would uh, Amadems uh, be able to afford the high cost of borrowing to be able